questions live. And we're giving them answers. Join us on the Discord, and you can get your answers. You get your answers. Yeah, yeah, you said that. Works. You can get your questions answered, too. Oh, I'm talking quietly. If uh, if I'm if I'm low to you, then your volume is too low because my levels are like flat out. <laughs> I'm above negative five dB. favorite picture somebody made with Kyle and I from the Red Green show and I get to be Red Green so good anybody grew up watching Red Green I love that show oh thanks everybody for hanging out really do appreciate it I'm gonna slow things down a little bit this is focus on you your questions giving you the answers you need to get on the air that's what we're aiming to do here so this is the after chat. The after chat is all about you, basically, whether you're in the text chat here on YouTube, text chat on Discord, or wherever, because uh, all of our chat rooms are all linked up. So Facebook, X, Twitch, you name it. If you're watching me right now live, the chat rooms are all connected. This is the point, right, is if you have a question, put question somewhere in there or at Ham Radio Crash Course if you're on YouTube, or best yet, join us on Discord. The link is in the description to join us. Set up your mic and speakers, and you can ask your questions live. We're literally going to go straight to questions in like a couple of minutes. It's go time. It's go time for you guys. All right? So let's hop into the Discord, say hi to our friends, and we got a good number of people in here tonight, so appreciate everybody taking the time. So away we go well uh, there's a ton of windows pe packs out there that people do for different either like video games tour a lot of it packs stuff like that build a ham radio pack yeah absolutely absolutely there's a guy in our club actually working on a linux uh live version with all the ham radio stuff preloaded yeah oh, was that you uh, could do os Oh, how's it going, guys? Let me jump in here really fast. So we're we're live on the after chat. Sounds like you guys have already been using Jason's time effectively, which is amazing. I heard loyal in there. That's awesome. I don't know what ham radio pack is, so we're gonna have to break that down in a second. But uh, yeah, so we're we're all live, and we're gonna go to questions for Jason first. This is a little bit different. When we do an interview, I always like to try and utilize the interviewee's time as much as possible for you to ask them questions. But loyal. Dear Zach, what is uh, what is a ham radio pack? What does that mean? Oh, I was talking about uh, WinPE. It's a version of Windows, kind of like a live Linux ISO oh. that Microsoft puts out that you can package with all the software you want. And on every reboot, it's like a fresh Windows install. And oh. it has none of the Windows bloatware. So I'm thinking about making a Windows PE image with all of the ham radio tools. So you could walk up to any laptop, boot off the USB drive, have it only save your logs, and you can unplug and be good to go. Do I have all configured everything? Does it have like a thaw space where you could save your logs and all that stuff? Yep, you can partition off slight bits, and I would probably partition about a gig, and you can make them as low as probably about. I have a Windows 11 one that's three gigs, so you could take like a four gig flash drive. Probably make an image closer to eight. So you can just walk up to any laptop, have Windows 11, have every ham with your tool you'd want, and you can just walk up to any computer. It's like the Kali Linux on a USB stick of ham radio. I, I, I really like that idea. If you do this, let me know, because I, I would like to make one. Yeah, I was talking about making a uh, Linux Live ISO kind of mm -hmm. concept, if you ever played with that, but Windows version. I have not, but I, I love the concept. This is what we used to do in uh, the lab spaces uh, when I used to work IT. When I was in high school, we would have all the computers on reboot, or at the end of the day, they'd reflash and, and go back to the base load so the kids could screw with it. Because we had a bunch of hacker kids, and we had to always be one step ahead. So we just we just reflash every <laughs> one of them every night. It was great. 
Mm -hmm. Hey, one suggestion, Loyal. Uh, I would give it a little bit more partition space uh, that's available for storage. Uh, USB thumb drives are cheap nowadays, so, I yeah. mean, a 32 gig is not that much. And people will want to load other things like ham radio manuals that are personal to them in that space. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that's what the other concept of this Windows PE image is as tools update you're going to need to delete and recreate the flash drive as it is so like uh, every six okay. months you're going to be deleting and recreating it i mean you could pre-can a lot of those manuals in that like firm space anyway right that they could just be pulled up then yeah well, and, and wouldn't upgrading the the actual WinP image on the uh on the static part of the drive that's not you know the the persistent storage I mean, shouldn't you be able to upgrade that without touching anything in, in the persistent partition? Yeah, but I would rather give an ISO file out and say either use Wolf, Rufus or Raspberry Pi image or something. And an ISO file is a byte-by-byte -byte image. It's going to wipe the whole drive. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. So diving in here, the way we normally do this is we take calls for uh, newcomers, people that are here for the first time that like to say hi or ask a question. Uh, we'll still do that at some point. But again, we've got Jason here, KM4ACK, and we're going to take questions for him <clears throat> specifically live. So is there anyone who has a question for Jason or a clarification on anything that was mentioned on the live stream? We'd love to hear it come forward right now. Yeah, I got one. Uh, that's Cooley. Go ahead, yeah. man. Yeah, the um, fix the fix for the Bluetooth or no Wi-Fi for uh, the Jackpotamus. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, when you make it into Linux, mm -hmm. where, where is that at? Uh, I did a video on that. If you'll look for my Linux Mint videos, there's a walkthrough of exactly how to do it. I don't remember that website. It's a GitHub site, but I don't remember that right off the top of my head. When you find that video, and it's probably close to a year old now, uh, there will be a link in the description. Okay. Jason, you're clipping a little bit with your mic, just an FYI. Oh, back up just a touch. Yeah, I think yeah, it was much better. So, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, uh, who else for Jason? Let's ask him questions on any of this stuff. If it's the obstacle course or projects he's worked on or if you want to get started in off-grid digital modes, go for it. Okay, I got another one. Mm -hmm. On the right. Huawei, uh, I'm using it for FT8, and every once in a while it will lock up the FT8. And I noticed that it's getting hot. Oh. So is there a way to cool that? Are yes. you running Linux or Windows? I'm running Linux 73. I have not ran into that, but I use that more as a test platform. Um, it might just be overworking that processor. I like ice. You can put an ice pack right on top of it. That'll that'll do good for you. <laughs> I, you could put you could put a. a some kind of fan on it, you know, and blow over the top of it, give it a little space, because I, I know the Woey is just like a, it's just a cube, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, does it have active cooling in the Woey, or is it all passive, like heat pipe stuff? Do you know? I don't recall right off. I think it has a built-in fan. Uh, does, okay. Check your fan. Maybe it's all gunked up with, with junk. You need to hit it with the uh, compressed air there. See if you can fix that. Okay. Yeah. Always, always take a look at the mechanical. When it comes to heat, I always like, you know, this is just a computer thing in general. I like to make sure that our cooling is working effectively, right? So if it's all gunked up with dust and all that, blow it out. You know, make sure you're running clean. Bright Night Metalworks, they said, hey, Josh, I just passed my technicians today. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you for joining the Fraternity of Ham Radio. Curious about limitations with VHF. What do you think about the ICOM 2730 Comet GP3 30-ish feet in the air at both locations about 30 miles away? Jason, do you have any hot takes on simplex, uh, you know, just VHF comms? Do you, do you have a certain recommendation either way, maybe on the cheap side, more expensive? 
Uh, I would be looking first at my topography and see if there's anything in between me and the station I wanted to communicate with. Um, so that's one. Um, on the inexpensive side, if you want a two meter only radio, the it's hard to beat the Yaesu twenty nine eighty. I run two of those, and um, they they are workhorses. Mine run twenty four seven. Uh, one on my Digipeter and one on my Winley Gateway, and I've had never had an issue out of those. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. Uh, with regard to Bright Night, yeah, my my generally recommended beginner VHF UHF radio is the ICOM twenty seven thirty. They're easy to use. They're easy to learn. You can do all the analog things with it. And if you ever required it, they do um, cross-band repeat, which is a capability that you often won't dip into. But for the people that need it, it's it's a value-added tool. So, yeah, your antenna's okay. Uh, wait, Comet GP3 is the single element. Oh, we're going to pull it up live. Hold on. So let me pull that up. Comet GP3 is the single element, I believe. Yeah. Absolutely. Great antenna. Let me get this out of the way so you can see it. Yeah, that, that's a, like a ground plane antenna. Those little stingers at the bottom are the, the shield side of the coax, which provides you that, you know, the, the other side of the antenna, as they call it. Yeah, great antenna. Good stuff. I, I, would, I would recommend that. You're good to go. All right. All right. So any questions for Jason? We want to make sure we use his time effectively because he's taken the time to be a great guest on the show, and we'd like him to get some good questions. So chat if you as well if you have a question for Jason. Uh, I'll field them or anybody on the Discord. Go ahead. Hey, any plans for a digital sort of RF scavenger hunt at Hamvention this year? Maybe like an APRS server that we sort of check into? Jason, you want to talk about that? Oh. Uh, the Hamvention <laughs> Challenge. Yeah, we're going to be running the Hamvention Challenge again. Um, yeah. So I, I can't let too much of that no, out of the bag. No, we can't. But we will. But we will definitely be running that again. I've got about seventy percent of the course already laid out. I've actually, I actually need to get with Loyal this coming week and uh, start working on a few back end things. So for anybody that didn't catch this, Jason and I both have videos on this. You should go watch Jason's though. His was really good. Last year. Unbeknownst to anyone, the only people that knew about it, I think, were Loyal and uh, and Ray Novak, uh, and I think some folks at the ARRL only the day of. Jason, primarily Jason, uh, I did help a little bit. We set up a scavenger hunt, if you will, that required ham radio knowledge to be able to progress in the course. And if you got all the way through the course, you won an ICOM 705. And we had no, seventy three hundred last year. Was it a seven three hundred? Wasn't a seven oh five? Seventy three it was a seventy three hundred oh, okay, last okay. year. This this year it will be a seven oh five. Oh, we gave away too much information, Jason. We gave away too much information. <laughs> so yes. I want people looking for it. it. Now we made it it's harder this year because no one knew what we the heck we were doing. We we put up we put up pictures of a, a QR code and it took you to a website that began the challenge. It was really cool. It was really, really fun. Um, so I'm very excited to do that again. And yes, we do have support, and we've got some people that are helping us. We'll be, we'll be back again. And we may, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm not gonna. I, I, I've got thoughts uh, that I'm gonna work out with Jason. <laughs> I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas. But I'm anyway, surprised you said this much. Yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so thanks for dropping the link, Jody. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we def we yeah, definitely want participants. Too. What's that, Jason? I said we definitely want participants. Oh yeah, we want a ton of participants. I bet you we're gonna get them this year. <laughs> now that everybody knows it's happening, uh, the cat is out of the bag on that one for sure. So, all right, uh, more questions for Jason. Throw them in there as fast as you can. Go for it. Is there a promo for Josh on HRO? No, I have no, uh, I have no promo on uh, at HRO other than I, I highly respect what they do out there and and really appreciate them. They are my local ham radio shop. 
Um, Jason, is there any links we missed? Uh, there was a couple of Fast and Furious stuff you threw out. Is there anything we missed that I can catch people up on? You know that that people might want to follow. So I've got a number. Of no, oh. Uh, no, the the D seventy five Linux and then that uh, FL Digi playlist I think was the only two links I'd sent you besides my uh, antenna kit. Mm -hmm. um, if you're running Linux and you've got that D seventy five, I'd love some feedback on that D seven five Connect script. Uh, so if you're a little bit more advanced in Linux and know how to download it and uh, make it executable and run it, um, that that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna try and update those links right now, so I don't I don't. Uh... We don't lose it. Uh, yeah. So, Jason, where's the uh, con where's the uh, thing you and Josh were just talking about going to be at? Is that going to be at Hamvention again? There was a question in the chat about it. Yes, that will be happening at Hamvention again. That's the only uh, ham fest we run that at. Mm -hmm. We've been asked to run it at others, and we're like, guys... Jason already put so much time into this. There's no way we could probably do it more than that. It's 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 a lot of work that that he put in to make this happen. So yeah, do do. Uh, if you weren't thinking about going to Hamvention and you were on the edge, this is probably the reason to go. It's it's actually really fun. Who else? Dive in there, guys. Any questions? Let's take them. That antenna you gave away. QRP, right? Uh, it's good for 50 watts uh, single sideband, and I wouldn't run any more than 20 watts digital on it. And would you recommend making it 30 and uh, link 30 and out to 40? It's good for 10, uh, 10, 15, 20, and 40 meters already. But if I've made it uh, 30 and then linked 40 to it, it would also give me some other band like 17. Uh, you know, I've never experimented with that. You could obviously get 30 and 40 by just uh, creating a link. I'm not sure about I don't think you'll get 17 in there. Okay, thanks. Just has an FII so I can spend more Jason's money. The USB-C mod board is in stock, by the way, as a pre-order. For what? Oh, if, oh yeah, pre-order. But they're not actually in stock in stock. It says it's back ordered more items to come. They're giving a 20% pre order discount. Okay. What's it for? What is that, Loyal? The 705 USB C. Oh, yeah. Mod. So somebody just said in the chat, Josh, uh, that they run that uh, my NFED at 100 watts all the time. Guys, with any of these 49 to 1 NFED half waves, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to saturate the toroid. Basically, you're going to overheat it. Uh, you know, if it's a hot day in the south, uh, that that will happen more easily. If it does, your SWR is going to start to climb. Yep. If you just stop transmitting, let it cool off, that thing will go right back to where it was. Um, so you're not going to damage one of these. Yeah, I um, you could for the for the you wind could users, water on it. You, you could put ice on, <laughs> uh, put an ice pack on top of it. Yeah, uh, for a. Jason already mentioned it, right? He uses Winlink and, and other fun stuff like that. So Winlink is one of those modes where if you have one of these toroid-based transformers on an antenna, you'll find what the saturation point is on your uh, on your antenna pretty quickly. Because Winlink, with all the retries and back and forth communicating, if you're running that at like a higher power, you'll definitely add some heat to the line. Uh, that's no question. So yeah, keep that in mind too. And that's all 49 to ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Josh, uh, you remember Adam uses a uh, much meatier core for his, and uh, I stopped putting them in a case. There's no reason to case them. I, I think that's probably true, unless you're going to, like, leave it outside um, and you live in an area that has, you know, particularly bad weather. It's not necessarily the toroid that's going to be the problem. It's just everything else, you know. You, you, you do want it somewhat i don't know protected but the design of uh, jason's antenna is one that yeah you could leave it up but uh, also it, it's kind of designed to be a, a portable type setup with the winder and all that stuff that it's built directly onto so you know just keep that in mind all right looking at the chat here 
Oh, <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. Uh, Jason, what would you say the biggest challenge you run into with Bluetooth anything other than the GPS bit? Uh, originally figuring out how to do it in Linux. Uh, once you understand the basic concept, it's not hard. Uh, but if you don't understand it and you don't know that, uh, that's the most challenging part. I went through it, though, with um, the MobiLink TNC. Um, and one other thing that will get you almost every time is if the device manufacturer uses a default Bluetooth channel other than one. Mm. On the MobiLink on the MobiLink TNC three, they used channel six. So if you didn't know that, it would never connect over the default of channel one. Same thing applies to the D seventy five. In that radio, the uh, data is moved over channel two. Channel one of the Bluetooth is used for audio um, uh, earbuds, hand mics, something like that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Bluetooth can kind of be so, weird. Yeah, knowing those channels in Linux, you've got to specify those in order for it to work. Yeah, Linux doesn't assume a lot. It it wants you to tell it what to do, which is which is frankly kind of nice. I do like using Linux, um, although I end up yeah, it's true. I end up falling back on Windows for a lot of ham radio stuff. But I'm gonna do that for the Jank the the original Jankopotamus I've got. I'm gonna load up a. Uh, mint linux on that and give that a round uh, yeah. shot so appreciate that uh recommendation jason all right yeah I, you know that that jankopotamus has been rock solid for me for two solid years oh that's so, good feedback yeah and i mean you take that out in the field too right yes that goes with me on every trip every outing it was in orlando it'll be at hamvention i mean that thing is always in my backpack it, it's kind and of did you buy it at the 50 dollar or 75 dollar mark it, it was 60 bucks when i bought it uh at micro center um and like i said i bought two of those and then i've got the other one that's the gateway touchscreen model um i think i paid like 200 bucks for that one or maybe 150 um Again, I'm just kind of using that one as a test platform. Mm -hmm. uh, once I get a system stable, I don't mess with it very much until it's been thoroughly vetted on a test box. Yeah, I got to say, it's insane the value that you can get out of these laptops. It's it's crazy that this exists and that like if you don't have one of these, it's it's kind of a no brainer to just pick one up right now. It's it's even at seventy five bucks now, eighty bucks, I guess. It's, it's stupid awesome. So. Yeah, and the key point is he hasn't let uh, Frank touch it. No, Frank is nowhere, not allowed anywhere near my laptops. <laughs> yeah, Jody brings up a really good point. So, uh, depending on which Jankopotamus you get, there are a couple of different varieties. The ones that have the LTE modem slot, meaning they literally have like a little SIM card slot, it uses an M2 slot. Is that right? Yeah, M.2 slot. Those there there are drives available, M.2 drives that are available that if you plug a drive into that, you'll now technically have a faster drive with that M.2 drive than the drive that's natively connected to the laptop, thus increasing your, you know, everything, right? Your speed, etc. So it's actually pretty cool. You can modify these to a point, which is which is pretty nice. And and I'll I'll uh yeah, let me let me let me grab the link here, Jody. Thank you for that. He's got an example of one. So check this out, guys. So if you take this, come on. Come on now. All right. That's what I need you to do. There you go. So here's a uh, SSD, 128 gigs. So not too big. You can probably get them a little bit bigger than that. But it's 20 bucks and it's an M.2 drive. So it's like it's much, much faster, which is really, really good. So still under 100 yeah very much so under 100 <laughs> it's got to be a sata drive m2 sata m2 sata yeah there you go all right let's see any uh any other questions for jason or any questions we'll just take all of them at this point because jason has a lot of input regardless of what we talked about on the show so go ahead jason do you sell winders not individually
There's plenty of those that you can download, though, on something like Thingiverse and print out yourself. Yeah, Jason, uh, do you, it, are you, oh, sorry, go ahead, continue. I'll ask my question after. Oh, I don't have a 3D printer. Oh, okay. Now, Jason, are you printing somebody, all of the... Uh, drop Jason's links? Craig, say that again. It sounded like it was muffled in the beginning. Swear if somebody could uh, drop Jason's links to his other websites. Yeah, it's it's on the uh, it, it should be on the video description on YouTube right now. You should be able to find it. Roger that. Thanks. Yep. Jason, are you printing the winders yourself, or how are they getting made now for your antenna kits? No, I've been printing those for a couple of years now in house. Yeah. Okay. What what printer do you use? I I was using the Ender Three Version Twos. Uh, I just got a new one, Elagu, I think Neptune Four. Elagu, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, you like it? I have been re yeah, I've been really pleased with it, and it uh, prints a lot faster than the Ender Threes. It almost looks like a Prusa type setup. What type of uh, plastic? Uh, some I, I print with a lot of different things. Um, PLA Plus and PETG are probably my two go tos. So is You'll this a save kit? About 30... Sorry. Yeah, you have to put it. You have to put it together, but your print speeds will decrease by thirty to forty percent with the same quality against the Ender. Yes, against the Ender. I'm looking at. I've got it up on the uh, the live stream right now. Uh, so that's an interesting design. How is it like a Bowden cable between the hot end and the extruder, or how does no, that work? There, okay. there is. It's a it's a direct a direct extruder. I believe is the correct nomenclature for that. Mm -hmm. There is no Bowden tube in that. Okay, and so it just it shuttles across that vertical path, and then the the print platform moves uh, back and forth, right? A bed, a bed slinger they, is what they call it. They also make that in a max version. I think that's what they call it. That has a huge bed on it. I didn't need that much, uh, and you double the price. I think when you when you go to that one, Josh. While we're talking about uh, winders and three D printers, I just DM'd you a link for some good uh, winders. That if you want to drop your affiliate code with them, uh, go for it. Oh. You guys, uh, if you're interested in Elagu, make sure you sign up for their uh, email. They drop a lot of big discounts and giveaways. So let me let me. That see looked almost I mean. affordable at three hundred and thirty dollars. Uh, yeah. I'll drop a. Oh, that must it? be the Southern California price. I only paid three hundred in Tennessee. <laughs> jab jab. <laughs> <laughs> There's so they, also the option for anybody out there who doesn't have a printer but wants to get something printed. You can get that done through, you know, like JLC PCB will do it for you. It's not cheap, but it's an option. Yeah, it's it's kind of wild to think. I mean, so uh, Jason, how how many of these winders do you print on that that printer that we just were showing, the Elegoo? So I. So I just recently picked up the Elegoo, so it does not have a lot of runtime on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have printed thousands on how, the Ender 3s. How consistent would you say? I, I'm assuming you had to do some tune-up work on the uh, the Ender, but how, how much have you had to tinker with a Neptune to get it going right? Uh, not very much. The Neptune has auto bed, which the Ender 3s never had. You could add it as an aftermarket, always just manually did mine. Um, but yeah, it was pretty easy to get up and running right out of the box once you walked through the auto bed leveling process. This, this, this printer has auto bed leveling at $230? No, it's if you're looking at the Neptune Four Pro, it should be at the two ninety nine price point. Uh -huh. And yes, it does have auto bed leveling. Three hundred dollar auto bed leveling? That's insane. Okay, hold on, I, that's crazy. Neptune Four Pro. <laughs> well, I'm glad I cost you money. Oh no, I, I'm I'm happy with my printer. I'm not going <laughs> to upgrade. But um, let let me. 
So this is three hundred fifty nine dollars for the for it on Amazon. Let's see if we can find the other one. Neptune Four Pro, two seventy nine right now on sale for the Pro. Does it really do auto bed leveling? What is going on? Uh, auto bed level? No way, dude. <laughs> Guys, let's no. make a sellout. In uh, give me like thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I I am not new to three D printers, right? I I've had even going. I had the Tico. If anybody remembers the Kickstarter three D printer, the Tico. I had one of those. Um, bed leveling is the the bane of most newbies into three D printers, and so to be able to pick up a three D printer that has auto bed leveling for under $300 is crazy. That is very, very low. Uh, yeah, no, I, guys, I, I appreciate that there's got to be old, you know, tons of different companies that also make printers that do bed leveling. I'm not saying that this is the first one to ever do it. I'm saying the fact that anyone is doing it and you can buy it, that is insane. That is extremely awesome. I love it. And yes, somebody said it hard, uh, earlier, if you're not using a 3D printer, you, you can't even really ham harder. There are so many things that get unlocked in like capability-wise if you get a 3D printer within ham radio that it, it's it's wild. There's there's so many cool print jobs. Like case in point, I just printed this. Uh, this is not a big thing, but I printed a little knob. I hated the, the length of the knob on my True SDX. So I printed a, a shallow knob, and that's what that's what I'm rocking right now. So, no, not right now. I told your brother the same thing. Thirty minutes, go. Okay, I got to nice knob. <laughs> no, go back inside. All right, questions for Jason. Go for it. Let's take them. Anything, anywhere, any ham. Wherever you're at, go ahead. Wild card line. Now we're taking the wild card line. Go for it. <laughs> All right, I got to do Did somebody uh, design a knob for the 991? I hate that knob with a passion. Uh, I'm sure there is a knob modification for the 991. Or you could modify it yourself by modifying another 3D print. It's not very difficult to do. In fact, it's it may be the same drive that you could almost use any other knob. Uh, somebody did say they have a question, though, slightly before you. So we'll go back to them. Go ahead. Uh, quick question. I'm going to build uh, the one of the QRP Labs uh, amp. Can I oh. use the rig expert to check that amp out? You know, it's uh, RF input. Use the rig expert for RF input. Well, you got to drive it, right? Yeah. So I, I'm just worried about, like, the SWR when it comes to the input. So I won't blow a QDX up. You're not going to blow the QDX up. You'd blow the amp up. What do you mean? I'm not sure I'm following. Like the SWR at the input of the amp, you know, so like what the radio would see. Oh, I see. Yeah, of course. You could you could attach a, a tuner onto okay. that uh, right. or, an cool. or an analyzer and take a look at what or, you know, use a nano VNA or something like that. Um, to give um, you an idea, so you, you got the amp on connected connected to a dummy load, I would say connected to a yeah, dummy I would have load. dummy load on the other side of the amp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then uh, and then check it that way. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I have one more quick question. Well, I shouldn't have said quick, but it's it's odd. Do you get are you guys familiar with the QDX? Because I, I built one and it turned out great. I built a, a high band and then. Um, Oh man, it's got this odd issue. But I've isolated it down to its core issue. But I don't know what component it could be. Um, it's something with the band select. It like you're you're able to like on the transmitter test page, mm -hmm. um, you know, of the uh, the serial uh, test program, you know, the configuration all that. Yeah. So when yeah. you select the different bands, when you're going to hit T, you know, to test the transmitter, it will pre-select which toroids, you know, sets it's going to use. And then what you do is you put one of your uh, uh, multimeter things on the ground, and then you put it on, like, the input of the first toroid of, of each set. And one of them tests great. They're supposed to isolate the other two while the other one's on, right? Mm -hmm. And I switch between the bands, and one's okay. One seems to be 
not okay and it's almost connected to the one next to it and then that one that it seems to may, maybe be connected to when i connect it to it the voltage is dropping and just like going down the longer that it's selected or on mm -hmm. it's just falling does that sound like maybe that selector transistor because there's three little transistors there under the toroids that it selects and it, i kind of think that's what it is but does that sound like a failing transistor where the the voltage could just be dropping like as you're just watching it on the on the multimeter i would expect it to either work or not work so the fact that it voltage drop starts to to go out on you is feels yeah. like different than i would expect i would um yeah it just I like would, a ramp, in this case you know? in this case i would recommend you go to the like whatever their group is the groups.io for instance sounds like a unique issue kind of yeah well it, it so instead of going to a general forum which is like our group of people this would be a case where you're so in the weeds already you should go to that group their groups.io page okay. and get in the weeds with them unless somebody wants to add their thoughts james it sounds like he wants to talk go ahead james i just talked to hans if you can somehow uh suss out how, and he will come back to you within a day and probably tell you immediately how to fix the problem i had issues with mine uh, burning up the the transmit transistors basically the finals i burned them up uh -huh. and i also burned up the reverse polarity and that was a known issue that he knew about and uh i literally in like in the email i didn't even get to talk to the guy and he's like yeah you need to do this 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 and i was my easy fix doesn't sound as yours sounds a lot more complicated but Hans yeah, will I've talk as to you. Research as I could so far, so I guess I'll I'll do that. that You're at the like point where you should point reach point. out. Yeah, that this is the okay. this is the right time. And he knows that system. I mean, it's still rolling around in his head. I mean, he's yeah. still. It's like he's one with it. So here's an interesting okay. one. I got a QDX here connected to my my Android tablet running FT8CN, and I'm able to kick the uh, QDX into transmit. But I'm not seeing myself ever on PSK Reporter, so I, I think I'm not getting any power output. So I, I cranked up all the volume, I did all that stuff, but I'm not I'm not seeing any activity. Oh, on the I output. got multiple tips for that. Yeah, I so went I don't know. That just recently. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, so the, I, it could be two things. So uh -huh. your low pass filter toroids, right? When you uh, pull them apart, if if you get the max power when you pull them fully apart, you want to remove a turn. Oh, wait, wait, and hold then, on, hold on, hold and on. And adjust I, from there. Hold on, hold on. I'm hold not on. at the component. I don't think there's a component failure because the unit works fine on my laptop. I don't think oh. it's. I don't think there's anything think wrong with the radio. It works just fine oh. on my laptop. This is on the FT8 CN software, I believe. That's does that's the where light I'm at. blink funny like that? That just like on off on off it, on it, off because that means like it's not it's, getting audio input. Oh, okay. Well, we can test. Oh, interesting. Okay, so here I'll. I'll put but if it does that nice pulsing, it should be working correctly. Hit but transmit, it Josh, off, so we can off. see your LED. It's like no audio. Yeah. yeah. Or it's too low. Let's see. I, I did leave this for the entire stream, so it may not be happy right now. But let me see if I can just do a CQ in a second. So we'll, it looks like 20 meters is popping right now, too. Yeah, the LED on the front display is so important. There to you me. go. It's like, pull, can you see it? It's like, whoop, whoop. Pulsing. If it's pulsing real nice and slow. Real nice and slow. Yeah, that looks like normal operation. Yeah, right? that's yeah. what. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing that I the radio is working. To, I thought it was supposed to blink three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, for normal no. operations. Nice uh, on off pulsing. It's it's the nice smooth pulsing that tells you oh, it's all good. The blinking is when there's an issue. And the, the way it blinks, it'll tell you like what it could be. Um, I would go read the manual. Well, oh, Josh. it's working. <laughs> well, it's, work with the never mind. Radio. Never mind. It's working. Mind. I, I don't know. <laughs> we fixed it. I don't know what just happened, but it's working now. So now, now I see myself. Don't know why it didn't work earlier, but. It's happy. I guess I just needed to let them uh, play nicely with each other. So that's on 20 meters, five, uh, 5 watts FT8 on the QDX. Of course, I've got the step IR behind it, so you know. Um, yeah. No, so uh, for a question, we'll come back to that. The, the, I'm not running the Lenovo right now. This is uh, the Samsung. The Samsung, the Lenovo, Lenovo M8 tab, that was my, my pick for, I don't know, like three years ago. Um, I'm going to the Samsung is going to be my recommendation. I believe you can get them under 200 bucks. I'll find the link for it, but let, let's go back. We'll go back to, uh, 
to the chat here. So go ahead. What are you guys going to say? I have a question. Is it a question for Jason or an open question for everyone? Uh, probably everyone. Okay. Um, so obviously I just got an, a DX10 uh, not too long ago. Um, every video that I've looked for for FT8, getting started with FT8 is like three years old. And every video has like a caution, do not do this or do not follow these steps because everything has changed a lot since then. So my question is, is there any decent videos about getting started with FT8 and stuff like that? I mean, I've um, made a ton of videos and it's all pretty much the same. What are you worried about specifically? I just need to figure out how to do it, basically. I mean, oh. I just, and start, just start getting started, basically, essentially. Okay. Um, so what radio do you have? Uh, DX10. Oh, my gosh. It's so easy, then. Um, do you have you have it connected, plumbed appropriately to your computer? Uh, yeah, I use uh, Ham Radio Deluxe to control it and everything. Oh, so you're already controlling with Ham Radio Deluxe. Yeah, I mean, oh, I my can gosh. switch to something else. No, 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 no. Just just open up FT8, and when it complains about no setup, click OK. It'll pop up a setting screen. Uh, and then in the radio rig dropdown, you just want to select Ham Radio Deluxe. And Ham Radio Deluxe is already doing the heavy lifting for you because it's connected to your radio. It's currently controlling it. You just point it to Ham Radio Deluxe. And then on the first tab, the general tab, make sure you have your call sign, your grid square. And I like to check the box that says double click to like reply to a station. And then everything else is something you'll add to it as you go, but that'll get you started like right now. Okay, perfect. Thanks. I think you also need to click the check uh, box for transmit first or or hold frequency. As long as you do both of those, you're you're generally good for operating. Any thoughts in the chat? Go ahead, everybody else. I'm just going off the top of my head, so yeah. We're gonna keep making contacts though. Now that the dang thing's the dang working. Thing's working. I just say, um, remind him about timing, getting his computer synced up. Yeah, Dimension 4. All one word, Dimension 4, if you're on Windows. Make sure that you install that software, run it, and then let it run every time you start up. You'll get the most accurate time source you possibly can, which would be very good. That's the uh, Thinking Man software thing? Yes, yes it is. Yeah, snow cones. I haven't used JT Sync. Um, at some point, maybe I should make a video about that. In fact, that'd probably be an easy one to knock out. Uh, the timing isn't as critical as everybody thinks. I've actually figured out how to do it. Just watching with the packets coming in and using command line to set date time, mm -hmm. and it's worked perfectly. Okay, right on. Uh, let's see. There was a question I had for Jason. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, Jason, you know what we didn't uh, dip into was what are you using for like VHF, UHF antennas? So we talked about HF. Obviously, you have your kid antenna, but like uh, VHF, UHF antennas, there's so many that you probably put your hands on. What do you like? What are you using now? At home or in the field? Yes, I'd love to hear all your thoughts. <laughs> so at home, I'm running a uh, J-Pole. It's a stainless steel J-Pole uh, that I got from TN07 uh, up at about uh, 30, 35 feet. And then in the field, more likely than not, you will catch me with some sort of roll-up J-Pole. Yeah, what, what roll-ups are you liking right now? Uh, the one I really like that's super compact, you actually can't buy anymore. Uh, it <laughs> of was course, by, of course. Yeah, it, it, it was by Nelson Antennas on eBay, and he just quit selling them. Uh, the closest equivalent is the Ed Fong. Um, it just doesn't roll up quite as compact. Um, and the N9TAX is another great antenna. I just lost uh, the Android. Something Something died. It died. Oh, you know what it was? <laughs> the battery. The, the battery died. Okay. That happens. Oh, my God. Oh, it's screaming at me. Stop it. Stop it. Sorry. Okay, we're back. We're back on the air. <laughs> 
do want to get my hands on. I do want to get my hands on one of those uh, Faraday antennas that you tested. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm going to take that back out in the field. I've got enough uh, content there to update. Oh, you know what, bud? Okay, you have to go into my office. You know my wall of backpacks. The lowest backpack on the left hand side. You need to bring me that. Because you're not going to be able to hear anything if you try and plug in right now. Um, the Farage is cool. And, and and actually, I've got it right here. Hold on. Oh, and so many people gave me so much crap about saying Farage instead of Farage. Well, guys, <laughs> we use the J-pole antenna to get many Fars. So it's the Farage. Regardless of what the creator says, we use this to get many fars, right? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, it, it's a Faraday because it's based off of a a Faraday bed. But yeah, so that that's that's oh, it's it's upside down. Uh, but that that's a it it's longer than a regular J pole if you think about it because it's not a wire, right? It's it's EMP cloth, so you're not going to have the same I don't know conductivity uh, across all of the the different pieces of it parts of it but regardless it was still like maybe one db off of the ed fong on two meters which from my point of view is like really good <laughs> i made my kid go grab my backpack because it's got my uh my audio splitter in here because he wants to hop out he wants to hop in and hang out so here's my this is my most oft taken uh backpack my patagonia i think this is a 20 liter if it's not 15 but in here, I think, is the... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yep, there it is. There's the magical audio splitter that we need. Along with my... Guys, remember, always, I like to hit upon this. Have a first aid kit if you go in the field, and a good one. Not, not a screwing around Band-Aids bag, but a good blood stopper and all that other stuff. If you're going out in the field, you owe it to yourself and others to have that. All right, we're, we're, changing, we're changing ears here. Get the... Go grab the other... Okay, never mind. I'll do it. Bruh. 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 My iPad now. No, it's not your iPad. But you can work that if you want. So make uh hold on, so I'll show you how it works. We gotta take questions though, so we gotta be quiet. All right, we gotta make sure we're listening. I guess it's getting free advanced, but I'm trying to get home where there's not so much background noise. Oh my gosh, you got a ton of background noise. What happened? Are you there? Cummins makes a lot of noise. All right. Well, you know, when you when you get to where you're going, come hang out. Um, but all right, questions, question for Jason. We still got we still got him. He's still hanging out with us. So I'd like to make use of his time. So, go ahead, guys. Well, I just uh, before you came in, Jason uh, gave me a uh, an absolute fantastic answer on what to do with uh, all the pies sitting around waiting to be eaten that haven't got a good job to do and. I have two Pi 3s that are going to, one's going to be the ham clock and the other's going to be a weather app. Uh, he's a wealth of good ideas. That is a good idea. You should use, you should make a ham clock and, and get, get get that going. That's a great idea. I better All right, Josh, is that Ben or Edison? This is Edison. Okay. It's crazy that you have a green shirt on, but it's not freaking out. It's It's freaking out a little bit, but not that bad. So yeah, Jason, that's a really great topic. If you, I, I I didn't catch that probably because I hadn't joined when you added that information. But yeah, what do you do with all these pies that are kicking around that you don't have uses for? Yeah, I mean there's so many one-off projects that you can run. Somebody else actually threw out ham clock. That's a great one. Uh, it's pretty easy to get that one up and going. Um, APRS digipeters, Winlink gateways. Um, I've got a Pi display that sits uh, on my shack. Uh, I'm sorry, a Pi weather display uh, that just constantly shows me a radar image and updates, I think, every five or six minutes. Um, personally, for me, I work outside for my day job, so that's invaluable being able to just glance and see the radar without having to actually go and open something up on my phone or a computer. Um, but there's a lot of one-off projects that you can you can kind of dive into. And personally, I think that's the best use case nowadays for the Raspberry Pi. I'm trying to show my, my son how to make contacts for me. 
This is truly automated <laughs> FT8 is what we're, we're, we're embarking upon right now. So Edison, <laughs> when you click that CQ button on the right-hand side, the blue button, then you just watch all this, right? And then down here, it's going to be somebody's replying to you. And you just wait for it to finish, and then you click CQ again, and that's how you make. That's how you become a true ham radio operator. I don't really know anything you just said. <laughs> well, just watch. I've got a question. Go ahead, question. Um, so I'm running multiple uh, computers now. Uh, this kind of goes with the 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 old Raspberry Pi thing. Has anyone ever tried to create a, like a sync server between computers for all of our? Our uh, setting files, log files for, for like, uh, you know, the FT8 stuff that we do. Are you running Linux? <laughs> I, I can. I run everything. There you go. Okay. Oh, no, in, the Lin you in the Linux, yeah, in the Linux world, rsync is probably what you want to look into. I can't help you on Windows. Well, what I'd like to do is create a, like a server, probably using like a Raspberry Pi 1. Like I've got a few of those lying around, and to be able to sync from my Mac to my uh, Jankopotamus to whatever other computer I have running, and they can sync all of those log files back and forth, so that uh, everything's uh, synced up. If about... you want something that's cross-platform, I would maybe Dropbox. Awesome. Uh, sync, sync thing is also cross-platform. You can also do rsync on Windows. It just takes a little more setup. Okay, I was thinking maybe a script that, that I could uh, build on each of the the uh, computers to sync up to a, a server on my LAN. But I don't know if I would go the custom script route, um, especially if I was trying to do cross-platform. I think I would find a ready-built solution, and you'll probably have less gray hairs after you get it installed. Uh, I run with scissors. I'm not scared. Um, PowerShell is not scary. Uh, scripting on a Mac isn't scary. Um, I'll probably give it a try and report back on the Discord, I guess. Yeah, the uh, custom script for each of them, and you should be able to make something happen. If you need help getting started, go to uh, OpenAI's ChatGPT4 and tell it your problem. It'll give you a structure for solution. Oh, I know. I already use it. <laughs> Edison heard ChatGPT. You're familiar with um, there, uh, I'm going to drop a link. There's a program called Local Sin that this guy named, I don't know, he's a U YouTuber that does all the home uh, networking stuff or the, the home lab stuff. And this thing called Local Sin, which allows you to create your own server for uh, sharing files among your network. And it's truly cross platform Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, you name it. See, I'm glad I asked. Thank you. Yeah, so what are you doing with that, Don? Are you using it now? Don, are you still there? Yeah, I'm hitting the wrong button. So I'm using it with my um, with uh, my Windows computer and my Linux, one of my Linux boxes, but I'm not, I haven't set it up on the Mac yet. I, I haven't done much at all with the Mac yet. <laughs> But I mean, Tim, demo, Tim if you watch uh, that link I dropped, uh, he he goes through the whole all four of the uh, different platforms that he's got. Okay, right on. And so the 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 thing about this particular thing is it doesn't rely on something external, so you're not having to go out over the internet or use somebody else's computer <laughs> to yeah. uh, store your files. Yeah. So we're we're doing great, Edison. Uh, driving the the FT8 location, we made it all the way into the UK uh, in <clears throat> Europe on five watts right now. So that's pretty good. If we can make a contact, that'd be great. Right on. All right. Uh, who's else in the chat? Any questions anywhere from anyone? Go ahead. Yeah, I got a question for Jason. Please go for it. Yeah, Jason, uh, just wanted to uh, check in with you here. I've got a good friend of mine, Mike, NA7Q. I'm sure you're uh, 
familiar with him. Sorry, I had the radio oh, yes. going off there. Um, and uh, forgive me if I've already, if, if you guys have already talked about it in the stream tonight. Um, I haven't been able to catch the whole thing. Have you been able to enlighten Josh on some of the new um, features that NA7Q has created for APRS? The only thing I haven't tested so far is his newest creation, which is uh, something to do with WinLink and text messaging. Uh, but yeah, the, his SMS gateway is working fabulously, uh, and his new store and forward APRS message system is incredible as well. Uh, after he got the uh, auto alerts built into it, that has been working great. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, he texted me yesterday asking if I'd help him test it out. He's actually creating a new system right now to be tested. It's SMS-2. And so if you were to receive a text message from somebody to your call sign on the system, it'll do the same thing as the mailbox uh, from station to station. So say my, you know, my dad texted me while I'm up in the woods from his phone. Um, he's trying to create a mailbox for that and that's uh, in beta right now so i just didn't know if folks had heard about that that's you know basically the main reason why i use aprs right there is the you know the transition between aprs to sms so i just didn't know if uh, the word was getting out and i do appreciate your videos uh, on on his uh, creations you know i think mike's quite the wizard when it comes to aprs Absolutely, and something I would encourage people uh, to do is go support him on Patreon. Uh, that service has got to be costing him money uh, when we're talking about sending SMS messages. And if he doesn't get enough support, I do not want to see that service disappear again. Yeah, absolutely. We don't want to see another SMS GTE system go down, you know, something like that. So definitely go check out APRS wiki slash SMS. That would be the place to go to go, uh, one, sign up. I'm sure um, Jason has said in his videos you have to go put in your number and qualify it or sign it up for the system. And then, two, um, go check out Mike, NA7Q's Patreon, and go help him out with, uh, you know, the the um, systems that he's running over there. But, uh, hey, thanks for letting me have my uh, time here. I'm going to jump out. KJ7ZVK. Thanks, guys. Good question. Bye. And, uh, and there's a question, or not a question, but Prep Ham Paul says, Jason, Google is getting your videos out. I got three or four year old family communication plan videos pop up in my YouTube homepage. So that's oh, wow. Awesome. That's pretty. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, that's really awesome. You're getting served up, man. That's good. It said he, he, Jason, I need to actually before he leaves. Go ahead. Sure. Jason, Jason um, uh, I'm literally Linux illiterate. I should probably just say before I go uh, installing all these neat things, uh, is there a cheat sheet or uh, a newbie to Linux with Raspberry Pi uh, resource you would recommend for an old man with brain injury? Uh, YouTube, there's a truckload of stuff out there. Uh, I also host a groups.io uh, forum. So if you go over to groups.io, do a search for my call sign, and you'll be able to find uh, the Raspberry. It'll still say something, I think, about Raspberry Pi, but anything is welcome over there, Linux-based and ham radio. Groups I.O. I like. Very 90s for me. Thank you. And, Jason, yes, there's, sir. A question, there's a question in the chat. Is that TNO7 J-Pole antenna still available? They're not finding it on the TNO7 website. He said. Oh, I, no, I was referring to another one, but I oh. don't know if that one's still available or not. Let's look. Um, I've had that for several years. If you're not finding it, it may not be. I'll pull it up right now. But I would call Bob uh, at TNO7 or shoot them an email. They might have some old stock still laying around. Is that your Jeep, Jason? What color is your Jeep? No. Okay. No, my Jeep's black. Oh, that's right. It's black. Okay, so yeah, I don't think they have it anymore. I wasn't seeing it either. I was going to drop a link. It's uh, Jazzmat in the uh, Discord. Yeah, I'd reach out to Bob and Laura. Like I said, they may have some uh, old stock or new old stock laying around, and they might could hook you up. I have no idea on that. I don't have any insight. 
You know what's funny is he's he's holding up Gengar. Gang so Gengar has the plexi uh bottom that goes on the spike for the TN07 HOA antenna. I use that as my my <laughs> lawn decoration was my Gengar. Uh Gengar is my favorite Pokemon. So yeah, the, the take anywhere hey, or the Josh, go anywhere did antenna. Did you just do a review on that barite uh J Pole? Uh yeah, it's it's literally laying on the uh that's the the ribbon that's above our head. Stop moving it. Stop. No more. Uh it's literally and, the ribbon that's above my head. Out. Yeah, he 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 literally hand makes hand stitch those. Those are uh those are a boutique type product. So you you got to catch him when they're when they're live cuz they're mm -hmm. get on he the crashed, notification he list. crashed his website. I, I did well. So so did Mike. Mike Kate M R D posted a review of it, and uh, it, they went out real fast. Uh, there's and they're gone. They're they're good. It's good though. And a really nice thing about it is it's adjustable. So you could do, you could do the forty or a four forty with it, seventy centimeters, and and still be good to go. Hit CQ for me, man. We gotta keep making contacts here. Come on, do your job. And I thought when somebody I thought had said that that's actually a full size J pole. I I think it's more the material. Well, we talked about that uh, a little bit. I don't yeah, think I know, that the, I... the cloth material has the same. I I don't know. I don't know what the right term is. Conductivity as a wire, and so because of that, I think that you need to use a little bit more. And and the way hmm. you'd know is if you'd measure the stub, uh, the stub length on the J. That would tell you if if it's all like twenty percent longer in comparison to like a J pole calculator, then that would tell you that's material uh, accounting for material differences. Yeah, the thing is, I know when I built my fifteen meter uh, full size loop out of that material, it's exactly cut to length for fifteen meters. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to make it longer or shorter. Hmm. Hey, I'm back hey. for that uh, that follow up. Go ahead. Uh, I had to I had to get home. You can't hear anything over a Cummins engine. But, Just go uh, ahead. Just go ahead. <laughs> I, Dive in. Uh, did I? I uh, you told me to come back once I got DMR trying DMR out on the repeater a couple weeks. Oh ago. yeah 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 and, right on uh, man yeah 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 how'd it go? Okay, so I got over to my repeat, my closest repeater. I key up on North America Talk Group. Mm -hmm. I see it come up on Radio ID that it connects as last heard. Okay, but it's like the vo or it's like the squelch is on max. Like I can see the radio light up. It's got a good signal, but I do not receive anything out of the repeater. Do you have the Talk Group set up? Yeah, Talk Talk Group set up. It's it's I it's. Color code one, uh, slot one, talk group set up. It comes back on, on radio ID that I've connected to the talk group as last heard, but I can't receive anything. Who are DMRI guys? Like, I, like the, the radio, the radio, the, the radio is receiving. I can see it light up with the mic, with the speaker and it's got a good strong signal coming back on the yeah. signal display, but ain't nothing. There is no audio coming out of that thing. Yeah, it, it, okay, it, I, it, that feels like a talk group receive issue, to be honest. I, I missed part of this here. Uh, I remember it from la from a couple weeks ago. Uh, color codes correct and time slots correct, yes? He said yes, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah based, based on repeater book, because that's what's in it. Okay, is your talk group set for... There's, there's two sections. Okay. There's two sections that you have to set up the talk group for your con your receive list and your contacts list. Are both of those set up for the talk group? Yeah, for North America, time slot one, color code one. I have the receipt, the RX group in in uh, the A column, and I have it also set up in the channel as channel as channel name or channel ID and channel group are both set also for North American talk group. Okay, and they're, and everything, I, if I remember right, North America's 93. The talk group number is just 93? Yeah. 
in your in your radio, do you have the top group set for just nine and three, ninety three? No, because my repeater is not a Brandmeister repeater. It's they have their North American talk group listed different. It's like uh, three one 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 seven or something. Oh, okay, that's Brandmeister labeling. Uh, is it TGIF repeater? It is. Uh, it's the F darn repeater. It's the Florida Digital uh, American Network. I love F darn. They, F darn is they, great. No, that's that's Bram Meister. We talked about this like a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. They might have North America blocked out because you can block out certain talk groups, and they might have it blocked out. Well, okay. So before we go down this rabbit hole, have you done Parrot? You said you did Parrot, right? And you can Parrot, okay? I tried Parrot, but it won't come back to me, and Parrot's not listed on on their website. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter if Parrot's listed or not. Uh, Parrot should work on a repeater, no problem. Uh, that's unless they blocked it. Yeah, this is uh, this sounds like something I need to dive into a little more. I got, I got, I'm frustrated to the the point now where I bought a second radio just so I can set it up on the repeater frequency to see if my first radio is working. Well, okay, before you do that, set them up as simplex so they can talk to each other. Do that to make sure that, you know, the radio is working and then start diving into the repeaters. Because the problem you have is, like, it's well, true. Have- it's true. I don't know what the repeater is set to, and they may have some things blocked. But the fact that you're receiving, because you're you're seeing activity on the radio, but the activity is is not breaking squelch, meaning that you're you're either you're not on the talk group, which is probably what I'm thinking is that it's activity not related to the talk group that you're trying to get on. Um, it's another talk group that you're not currently queued up on, right? So that that's what I'm guessing. You see well, what I'm I already, I already, I already, I already, yeah. Somebody's already mentioned that, so I took every talk group that is in that time slot and color code, and also put it on the receive list and put it in promiscuous mode oh, just to try okay. to pick up something. And you're not hearing anything. No, I'm not hearing absolutely crap. And I know, I know the radio transmits because I have a, a tiny a. And I have an analog, and I can hear Dion analog uh-huh. channel, and I can also see it in Tiny Essay. So, did you did, do you have the second radio going yet? No, I literally just grabbed it from Amazon as I was leaving to go pick up some axles. Okay, does anybody else have any other thoughts? Because I'm kind of worried about. I'm worried that the radio might not be okay now. <laughs> Because uh, if, if he's got it in full promiscuous mode and attached to every talk group on that repeater, and he can't hear anything, you're sure you have the you have the receive groups set correctly, right? The receive groups, talk groups. I yeah, I followed whoever helped me, whoever recommended me their video. I've watched their video. I've watched uh, uh, uh what's the big the big YouTuber uh. Jason. Something calm. Oh. Uh, yeah. Hammer. Hammer. No, no, no. It's uh, br- I bridge calm. I watch bridge calms. Yeah, they're, the big, bridge they're the big. They're the big. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, Jason's Randy's probably videos. the biggest for DMR. I think Jason's probably the biggest DMR uh, user. But okay, bridge calm. Yeah, they produce a ton of videos. That's true. Hank just yeah, said uh, Jason has a video about that group and network specifically, so I would refer to Ham Radio 2.0's channel for that. I I watched his video and it didn't help me at all. I would sell all your radios. Start yeah. over. Yeah. I mean that's that's about where I'm at. Just pick pick another. D- go, go to Yesu yeah, Fusion. Right. It's easier. Out of curiosity, Much. which one of their repeaters are you trying to connect to? They have several of them in Pinellas County. Uh, I can, I'm in between the Lakeland and the Brandon one. Okay, cool. I think you need I'm, more I'm in Lakeland uh, more than I'm in Brandon. 
you just need a Mirage 165 watt amp. When in doubt, I mean, don't tell me. Well, it's it's apparently I'm, not. I'm joking. It's on, yeah, on receive, an amplifier does you no good. I think no, a Yagi wouldn't hurt you. Um, I don't. I don't think. It's, it's, so, so here's the thing, right? He's not even at the transmit spot right now. He mm -hmm. he's at merely receiving, and he's receiving the signals, and he's not. It's not breaking the squelch, and the fact that he's got it all set up that the receive groups are there, and none of them are getting picked up. That's a little frustrating, particularly because uh, the USA Talk group usually has a lot of activity. So you'd expect there to be something. Can you do a different repeater, or do you have a hot spot? Do you have a hot spot? I'm looking at hot spots. I honestly, I don't know which one to buy. That's the easiest to set up. Open spot. I'm open gonna, spot four. I, I'm also going to throw this out there real quick. I just shot you a uh, DM here on Discord. Shoot me a message back. I can take a look at your code plug if you want. Uh, if you want to send it to me, I can take a look at that and see if there's anything that's glaringly obvious that might be, you know, just that one little thing that's off. Mm -hmm. So check your Discord DMs. Uh, you'll have one from me here. Yeah, take up a... Yeah, I'll have to figure out how to send a code plug. I can send pictures for sure, but if I can figure out how to send the whole code plug, I'll do that. But yeah, I, I think at this point you need like a little one-on-one -on -one time. So if, if if Frank's willing to do that, that's that's really helpful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. And he'll up and rag you after the stream. Yeah. yeah, you just have to do Frank hours, that's all. Yeah. So really quick, let me hit this uh, super chat. Sorry for waiting so long. KC1TLM says, I become more interested in rapid deployment POTA and SOTA antennas. And I've been wondering what is the difference between NFED half wave and a NVIS antenna? Thank you for all your teachings. Okay, go ahead and check on dinner. Go ahead. You check on dinner. I'll be here for a little while. All right. No, just go eat. Nothing. Go eat. So, okay. Inf so, uh, Jason, are you still there, man? Did Jason leave? Yes, sir. I'm still here. Yeah. So, uh, have you ever played around with NVIS antennas? And what are your thoughts on that versus NFED half waves and all the other stuff? So, NVIS is not going to be dependent necessarily on the antenna. You can run a dipole in an NVIS configuration, you can run the NFED yes. half wave. Uh, in an NVIS. In fact, I did a video where I took my antenna, uh, the NFED half wave, had it two feet off the ground to prove that you could do uh, a wind link connection with the antenna deployed that poorly uh, with NVIS. So it's a matter of how high your antenna is. Mm -hmm. Two feet off the ground, a little bit extreme, um, but it was to prove a point that you, you can make it happen. Right. So, yeah, well said. Um, so, actually, Adam, who I, I don't think is here today, unfortunately, because he's... I don't see him tonight. Yeah, he, he's got a whole... Uh, uh, when we were backpacking, he was talking to me about, hey, guys, there's, you know, there's so many people that are talking about NVIS and blah, 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 and that's the that's the hot jam. The reality is, is it's actually... You're, you're making your antenna worse if you do NVIS with your, with your say, 40-meter dipole. So generally, the common the common knowledge is you you take your NVIS antenna, which is a dipole generally, and you lower it down to the ground, and it's firing more of the RF up, near vertical incidence sky wave is the uh, is the acronym. The problem and the reality of it is, if you just left your forty meter antenna at the appropriate height, it would actually perform better in the NVIS category than bringing it down. So the only thing you get is is actually a reduced NVIS vertical sense capability, and then also deafen yourself to the DX contact. So it's, that may be what you want to do. That that might be your goal. But if your reality is, I want NVIS and I also want the longest possible contacts that are available, then keeping it at the appropriate height of for a 40 meter dipole or just higher than NVIS is always going to yield better results in the long run. 
It was a really interesting point that he brought up, and uh, I, I, I've still been wanting to make a video on that to just talk about the realities of NVIS. And a lot of people think that it's like the the, the prepper antenna, but the reality mm -hmm. is it's 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 just a it's just a, a dipole that's lower to the ground. I will add this: uh, coffee and ham radios, uh, especially specifically the smoke and ape. They did a great. I think it was a Thursday night show. Uh, live stream on NVIS antenna and how it works specifically. So that might be a great mm -hmm. resource as well to check out. And Absolutely. also, I I think there's a you... comment in chat. You need to hear. I... If any of you guys uh, have ever been students of uh, Savic W4, okay, go ahead, read it. What, what, okay, what what are you talking about? Which chat? Go ahead, just say it. If you if you got the chat, go ahead, read it. Uh, gentleman, Chris said I was thinking about hanging a counterpoise wire below my NFED halfway for NVIS. While that won't specifically make it an NVIS, Sabic determined through real experimenting that by running a parasitic element spaced correctly underneath your NVIS antenna, you can put up to three dB more energy back up. Okay. And when you're out on that mountain or desert or wherever with really poor soil conditions, uh, that's three dB to save your life. So you're trying to say that running the uh, counterpoise back under your sloper is going to be a better. Um, I don't know how that's going to work, but I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. It's a parasitic reflector. Yeah, it changes. It in, if you do it correctly, it actually changes the way the ground the ground reflection is done, because it you know, moves the ground up closer. Yeah, and I've had RF engineers go and draw the, all of that stuff out on how that works. That's how they actually prefer to put uh, antennas up. They don't like to rely on earth ground. They like to make their own ground. Oh, man. I'll try it. Really works, but I've got a 40 and a 20 NVIS up so yeah. I can talk to my neighbors, and I'm just stunned how well it works. Well, you're talking to your neighbors, the, though. That's not hard to do. What do you mean by neighbor? Like you're talking about a house over? Uh, Tennessee, Georgia, um, Arizona. Oh, I so. Use a, okay. A, a wider space for neighbor. I got it. Okay. Oh, man. Go ahead, comment. If you have a water with N zero J E O in in the antenna chat, he will will tell you the right way rather than this complete and utter speculation which is utterly wrong and has no idea in fact. So go and speak to the guy who's trained on how to make this stuff work. What what do you mean? Like what 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 specifically would you do differently? Well, you, you've come differently? up with seven or eight different things. None of them are right and all of them are wrong. So adding a little bit to the bottom of your J-Pole is not going to make it do NVIS. Right. There's correctly, there's correctly uh, a way, laid out ways to make an antenna NVIS. Mm -hmm. uh, adding yeah. a bit to an already established antenna isn't going to make it NVIS. And, and generally, a, an NFED half wave doesn't necessarily – is not necessarily going to perform in the NVIS capability. Mm -hmm. uh, you know – Yeah. Setup wise, so the, the, is if you vary. want to know how it works, mm -hmm. ask the person and, or at least get the correct diagrams for how the, an Envis antenna is installed. I, I, I'm with you on but that, the, but but I'm also in the mindset of like experimentation is probably worth more than um than you know. Okay, so let's say let's say you don't have the 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 most intelligent person who made the thing. So what could you do? Well, you could do whisper tests and you could go in the field and you could experiment with different antennas and modify your whisper test so that your data set every time you changed up your antenna significantly would be different. And that's going to yeah, give that's you the whole way point, more. Josh. Yeah. The whole sorry. point is not to gesticulate and wave your hands around for a week. Yeah. Go and do it. Yeah, absolutely. The whole point is to, to go and do the experimentation rather than just sit here and listen to the same bunch of uh, mis yeah. misinformation. 
I, and I, I think I, I'm going to call you out on that. Uh, Sabic does not promote misinformation. I'll take my uh, information. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Engineers. Sabic so is you... one opinion, and I think, the British Army, I, I think the British Army and the U.S. Marines have a better, uh, a, a better and a longer, a longer uh, uh, published set of works than uh, all of them. Well, uh, it's I... one diagram. Aside from uh, Savick being uh, Spock's brother, uh, what are we talking about? Who is what is Savick? Who is Savick? What is this? It's, it's C E B I K, by the way. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it, he's the guy that did all the work on um, ground radials and their effects on okay. a vertical. Okay, so, so he's to, he's a silent key. Think, as of 2008, yeah, he's a silent that guy? key, okay. but he did a lot of work in the 30s about uh, about that. Well, that's not what I'm on about. Not him specifically. What no, I'm no, saying I, is, I just want to make sure we're on the uh, same page. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, fine. Is, yeah. is a, NVIS is only a way of working to making sure your RF goes where you want it to go, right. so the enemy doesn't see your RF envelope. That's okay. the whole point of it. That is what it's intended for. Yeah, the, my only thoughts but on all this is also a way for park. radio hams to only work local without interfering into DX. Okay. That's, that's its bubble. I mean, a lot of older hams used to call them cloud warmers. Mm -hmm. Right. That most of your RF goes upwards. So it depends on which era of antenna information you want to listen to. Uh, I know I'm coming across as a bit of an old fuddy duddy here. No, I I, but, I, I hear what you're saying, uh, but so you know, the, it's just that there's, yeah. there's always there's this speculation that it's some big thing. It's not. It's horses for courses. If you only want to, if you live in a valley and you want to work your friend in the next valley, no amount of uh, 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 beams and things are going to help you, are they? Right. So NVIS is the way to go. But as I said, we inadvertently set up a me and Rob inadvertently set up an NVS NVIS antenna uh -huh. when we put our uh, dipole right above a, a metallic fence, and it was it was fantastic. This was in the low. We were working all around Europe, and I think, hang on, this area is fifteen feet above a basically ten mile long piece of wire that goes around this big horse thing. So, yeah, we inadvertently made the world's best NV NVS antenna that was working great into Europe. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, sometimes it's an a, a, a unfortunate uh, accident of installation can cause you some very interesting effects. Um, right. So, it, uh, as I said, it, there's far too much uh, labored on uh, chatting about what it is rather than going out and doing it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that I, was my point exactly. Is take it to the park, if if that's the best place you have to do these tests, and it's the lowest noise place to do it. I took mine to Elmer Lake State Park, State Fishing Park, and I could talk back to Enid forty miles away, like they were sitting next to me. But that wasn't my intent. I wanted to get out a lot better than that. So right. Well, there, there, there's a uh, in the Falklands conflict. There was an R a SIS spotting unit on top of a mountain. They threw their dipole up in the, the only two bits of trees they had handily. And then, of course, got in their little dugout, which, uh, you know, the wind blew their antenna down and they worked the entire... Um, they worked all the way back to London uh, with an antenna on the floor and were able to do the necessary comms to... Uh, their spotting arrangement for a fortnight like that. So the the whole point is is there's no right or wrong way in antennas. There's the way that works and the way that may work. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no wrong way to do it. And that's really one of the things that you need to remember with antennas. You cannot put an antenna up wrong. You know, even if it's it looks wrong, it may work anyway. Yeah. All right. So I, I hear what you're saying. I, I get it. Uh, so I got to run to the restroom really quick. I'm going to let you guys continue to talk, but I would like to, you know, again, Jason's here. So let, let's let use his time while he's here and, and not we, we can wax poetically about all this stuff, because, again, it's good stuff. And testing is always key. Always, always the most paramount thing we should do, regardless. So 
So the best thing is you you learn from the people that you read online or in books, you apply it, and then but you you test that setup. You test to make sure that it is still as good or or possibly you did something wrong. That's the important thing to remember always with all of this. So I'm gonna run to the restroom. Real quick, Josh. Uh, like, you, yeah. you took my Dominican Republic contact. Uh. I'm not doing anything. I just called CQ. I'm just calling CQ. I'm not I'm not clicking on anything. So if they reply to me, that I <laughs> Yeah, they, they, you, they got you. They they came back to me. I'm just calling CQ. That's all I'm doing right now. I'm not even looking at this thing barely. Uh anyway, oh, I'm okay. go, yeah. go, go, go. Yeah, I got a bell out. Oh, you got to go. The word okay. you were looking for was velocity factor. Well, so Jason's got to head out. So Jason, thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate you for taking the time, and it, it's very, very appreciated. So everybody, make sure you sub to Jason, KM4ECK. The link is in the video description. He's a great guy. So Jason, thanks again. Thanks for Yeah, thanks for a fun night. It's always Have fun. Have a neat day, Jason. Be safe. All right. I will be right back. See you guys. All right. I will be right back. You guys... Uh, Let's let's answer some hammer questions. Try not to kill each other. Yeah, let's. let's... Uh, I got a question. All right, go I'm gonna ahead, let. Question. Go ahead, question. Go ahead. Question. All right. So um, so I done opened up this um this high precision watt meter power analyzer, and uh, I was able to plug it up to a battery, and the screen came on for about six seconds and immediately shut off. Does anybody know any test points on this little uh? This little one that you get on Amazon for like 15 bucks. I don't know if the stream blew up or what happened, but anybody got like a schematic or something for it? There might be a reset button on the back of it. It's it's like the little gray one that you put in line. It has two lines. Yeah, it's got like a source and a load, and it's a 150 amp looking one. Uh, I believe it's like 14 bucks when I bought it like many moons ago. Yeah, well, fourteen dollars may be too much to spend on such an important piece of equipment. But having said that, you can maybe use a paper clip, and there's a little tiny hole in the back, and it resets. That may work. Was there any magic smoke? Um, no. So it came. It came with these like really short leads. I put some new power poles on them. Um, I desoldered the leads off of the board and uh, put the longer leads because these leads that were on it were about like. Two inches, three inches, they're really short. Can't plug it up to the battery box. So I put like some eight inch extension things on it. And um, yeah, it doesn't, the screen comes on, but it doesn't show anything. Like it, now it doesn't show anything when I plug it up. I tried fault isolating it or anything. I, I guess I'll open it up and see if there is a reset button on the board. Yeah, there should be. But did you, did you check the polarity? No, that uh, no. but I but I know when I desoldered the stuff on the board, the um, the wires are in the correct location. I didn't didn't uh, flip them backwards the other way or anything. Yeah, I would I would check your solder connection, and also check the polarity. I I would also check the uh, you know plug the power into one side and check power output on the other side to see if it's getting power through uh, and yeah I, I would double check the polarity too just in case and there might be a very small transistor type fuse to replace if you smoke if you let the magic smoke out okay um i also forgot to add i had a um one of those the uh, anderson power pole breakout panel the one that's got like eight little things the dc in i plugged it up to the uh, battery box and the normal light came on it it seems to be passing voltage but it's not displaying anything on the little screen i don't know if the screen gave out or what might be the screen gave out mm -hmm. and Possible. some of those are notoriously bad uh, my uh, KMRD has looked at them sometimes, and I think he's basically given up on those inexpensive they're, ones. Yeah, they're junk. Mm -hmm. The one made by Anderson, I think, is about fifty bucks, give or take, mm -hmm. and that one works really well. <laughs> but it's um, also built a lot better. Well, I I don't know. I think the he's gone to those shunts, and uh, yeah, the shunt works good. Yeah, the, yeah the, that's that's the. Don, you just dropped. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, did I just lose? Did I just dump Discord?
Uh, okay, <laughs> so uh, this is probably about the time where we need to switch over and say a big hello to all of our YouTube friends that have joined us. And uh, yeah, we got a, we got a good group here. By the way, thanks everybody for hanging out. I know this is a bit different than our normal uh, after chats when it's just you know me running the show with with taking all the questions and then using our Discord to help everybody out. We'll go back to that next week. Don't worry. But uh, want to go down the list saying hi to our ham radio friends on YouTube and all creators across the board. So Bill Ham Radio Tectonics is in the house. How you doing, man? Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, man, you're on. Hey, I'm the, I'm usually just a lurker. I keep my mouth shut, but. Uh, uh, Good discussions today. Glad to see Jason. Uh, met him in person, and glad to see him on the. I always watch his uh, his videos, and glad to see him on uh, your live stream tonight. Say hello to everybody. Say hello to you, Josh. Uh, got a couple. Thank you, buddy. I know you guys mentioned you guys mentioned the T Tower, and I'm playing with that currently now because I always wanted a uh, Digipeter I Gate. So um, I I'm, I have a couple of videos about that. If you guys want to check out my stream, not a whole lot of information. But um, everything is available, information on that in LilyGo and also uh, GitHub, if you just Google those things. But I just put a bandpass filter on that. They said it wasn't necessarily the cleanest, and uh, hopefully that'll clean it up a little bit. But anyway, um, just um, uh, glad to be here tonight, glad to listen to these discussions, and uh, I will uh, see you guys later. Right on, man. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. All right. Next is uh, Rob, Digital Rancher. Saw you in the uh, live stream chat too. Appreciate you hanging out. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Um, went to the uh, to the Go Kit uh, challenge oh, today. That's that right. was you fun. Did. How'd that go? Yeah, that that was pretty cool. It was, uh, you know, we had kind of the threat of rain all day, but. Um, the facility where they hold that it's outdoors, but there's a great pavilion. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a fantastic pavilion. Uh, and there was a decent turnout. I don't think it's all they were expecting because, you know, we were supposed to have bad weather. It actually held off until the event was over, but, uh, it, it was pretty cool. It was pretty fun. Lots of neat ideas. Um, it's certainly something that should be better attended than it is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's such a cool idea, and it's a it's a good group that's putting it on. You know, I think they're only three years into it, so I'm hoping with a little more exposure uh, that thing starts to take off because it's such a cool idea. So I I um I know last year I think Frank was actually on the after chat when when uh, they came back from from the event and I ask him the same questions I'm going to ask you right now. So like, did you learn anything new as, as far as go boxes or was there anything you thought it was like, Oh, this is a killer new technology that we haven't seen before. Or maybe you just want to tell everybody to go to your video that you're going to post about it. That'd be okay too. But yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, um, I, I put out a really short video, like a one minute video already. It's um, so I took my new linear satellite kit, um, it was kind of the first time I, I've had it out in the wild. I've just been using it uh, around the house here. And uh, I, I, I was surprised at how many people were interested in it. And so I got kind of stuck at a table, um, you know, talking to people about it for almost two hours. And wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that part was great. But, you know, I was itching to walk around and, and check everybody else's stuff out. Mm -hmm. And um, so I didn't get to do that as much as I would have liked. But there was one, uh, one kit that I thought was just, I, I wouldn't say there was anything like super innovative about it. It was just some really neat ideas. And this guy had taken, uh, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, and I've got one. I should know what they're called. But they're like the, the Milwaukee boxes that you use to carry your tools and stuff in. Yeah, the pack out. The pack out boxes. Yeah, the pack out thing. Yeah. Um, and, and he had that thing. So he had he had like a, like a three and a half, four foot stack of different pack outs. Yep. One was full of batteries. Right. And those things have wheels on them. So it's, you know, it was it was just really a great idea the way that uh, he deployed it. And, you know, for folks that maybe have those uh, or have seen those. 
Oh, yeah, go ahead. Did he have more in pack out than he did in radio in money? <laughs> They're uh, very expensive. Yeah, they are very expensive. I mean, you have to you have to grab those on a deal for sure. But um, you know, they've got um, they've got form fitted uh, areas in the lids to like hold batteries and and hold tools and and things of that nature. And he leveraged those uh, and made mounts for like his radios and speakers. And that that was one of the neater, uh, you know, it was one of the more ingenious ones. Um, And I I know some of the other guys are going to have some great videos on it. So I don't want to, I don't want to spoil all the fun. But uh, it, it was a fun event, and, and certainly if anyone on here is in the North Texas area, you should really try to get out and attend that. It, it was really cool. I love it. If and, and I hadn't driven from Milwaukee back to Oklahoma on Friday, I would have probably driven from Enid to Dallas yesterday for, or today for that. That sounded yeah. cool. Yeah, so yeah, it, for for everybody that that is interested in in a pack out type of, fine, my, my kid totally messed with my uh prep him Paul just dropped a picture of the actual uh kit from the uh, oh, that's challenge awesome. today. We'll take a look at that in a second. But if you have uh if you have Milwaukee taste but uh Harbor Freight budget, they have a Bauer line of modular toolboxes. I have been using these now. I I've I've used them for like all of my storage stuff. I have a big video coming on ham radio storage for just everything, not just radios. And so this is the large toolbox, but if you um if you scroll down, it's part of a modular system. This is the the baseline roller toolbox and they all lock in. You 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 use little ledges on the or latches on the side. Um and you can get well, what just happened there? Come on now. Uh you've got the small toolbox, you've got the bit storage so i actually use these for screws and whatnot unrelated um to to ham radio stuff but I, this basket is amazing like if you do a camp out or whatever and you just latch that on the top of the box you can throw all your random junk in there while you're getting set up and then you, you go there and all your bags are are in there your empty bags you got to refill back up all that stuff like it, it it's actually pre- the harbor freight system is actually pretty good uh and and it's not break the bank expensive in comparison to the Milwaukee's which is also fantastic love that too but it's like so expensive for the Milwaukee's yeah. and the harbor freight's I mean, like it- pretty good your best bet is like whenever you buy one of the Milwaukee bundles, right? And you kind of get that as an extra, right? That's that's how I've uh, started to accumulate mine. But um, yeah, if you can grab that that photo that's in the uh, in the Discord yeah, chat, I'm doing it right uh, now. Josh, that is insane. I mean, it's, and, and and so that that was just the bottom. Right, kind of the bigger one. That that was his power, right? That's he's his got battery. like cheap toggle switches for power, right there. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. crazy. It's, and oh, it, look it at the antenna well mast. Done. He's got an. He's got a like a almost yep. a a hogged out billet aluminum, uh, mast holder, that uses yeah, that rod right. system on the side of the the pack out. That's that's pretty slick. That's really yeah, slick. If I recall, he had a twenty seven thirty. And a 7100 as the radios. Nice. Um, and, and they were like three, I think they were like, you know, on the third, you know, he had like three levels to this thing. So it was, you know, maybe like three and a half feet high or four feet high, something like How that. How much did that weigh? I, a I, lot. Like I said, I, I didn't have a chance <laughs> a to lot. do a deep dive on it, but I think it was the coolest thing I saw. Mm. Yeah, right there it is. Isn't that awesome? Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is an even better picture. Look at this, guys. So what's the how much does it weigh? A lot. That's how much it weighs. A I, I lot. Actually, I didn't know I needed one of those yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really cool boxes. And they all latch into each other. And so yeah, you yep. could you could you could latch them all up and you could put it in the bed of your truck and you need like one tie down through those yep. little arms, like cause those metal those metal arms, you could pass the strap through it and tie it down and it locks the whole thing in place. It's not gonna go anywhere. So yeah. it, it is actually a really effective way to go. It's nice. And, go and, nuts, and the if bigger you will. the biggest item, right? The biggest <laughs> box on the uh, on the floor, you know, or on the bottom has wheels and a telescoping handle so that you can you know, move the whole stack, which is pretty cool. Yeah, there it is. You got the yeah. 
So, the uh, 2730 and a 7100 on the, it. The Harbor Freight does that too. And it's so if the Harbor Freight is 70 bucks, only imagine what it costs for the Milwaukee. It's over $100 for that roller, yeah, that roller base. Yeah. I, by the Whoa. way, I've looked into all of this. I, I deep dived this whole thing before I decided to go with a lot of the, the Harbor Freight stuff. I, I have. Um, I have probably five of the packouts. I could grab them, but I really like the the narrow vertical toolbox. He doesn't have that in in the picture, but the narrow vertical toolbox is really good for the sizes of a lot of stuff we have in ham radio. I, again, I'll I'll talk about it in the video I'm putting together, but um, yeah, great idea. It, it great idea. Really, really yeah. strong. This, uh, yeah. th that was Josh, I right. just dropped my QDX kit in the. Uh chat you've got the the tall narrow one the tall narrow uh milwaukee is my favorite size favorite size no question this this is perfect and they have all the little dividers and all that stuff that you can it, it's got a great little drop-in tray you could it, it's easy to carry it's got a huge, and the carry handle it's got a really good handle yeah um yeah you, you could you could put your entire radio kit in this one box and you could be field day ready with, without much issue including battery yeah. solar radio all that stuff like there there are some really good pack out boxes that exist right now totally agree great yeah, walmart even that. has a pack out box and it's cheaper than the uh harbor freight they yes they do they do and they're not bad they're not bad all right uh, the, the one other thing i'll just mention real quick josh uh, yeah. uh, for, for folks that are looking for a project for their spare raspberry pi i've got one set up running jupiter hub oh. and uh that works great right if 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 you use jupiter notebooks or if you're into markdown for document uh for documentation it's uh it's fantastic to have your own jupiter hub server running on a raspberry pi so what do you do with that because I'm not familiar with Jupyter. I don't know what that is. So Jupyter Notebooks, um, it, it's used a lot in, uh, in in data science disciplines. It's You can actually write uh, various types of code in the notebook pages, and it will, uh, it will actually run the code, right, depending on how what plugins you have installed and, and those types of things. So it's, it's really cool for documentation. Um, you know, I, I'm surprised uh, that you're not aware of it, Josh. I mean, it's, you know, pretty popular in, in dev circles. Uh, yeah, but you, you have to remember, I run an old traditional aerospace hub well, where, where, yeah, where technology yeah, hits sorry. us a little bit slower. <laughs> but, but tell me what you specifically use it for. I, I always, so, I always base it on like, Everybody gives you this like thirty thousand foot description of technology, and I always ask you, but yes, but what do you yep. use it for? Yeah, so um, I'm not a big fan of like uh, using OneNote or uh, Evernote or you know a, a tool where somebody else has all the things that I think are important, right? All the things that I've documented, either mm -hmm. you know for projects for you know anything right whether it's ham ham radio whether it's personal finance whether it's you know projects i'm working on i i i have to write a lot of documentation for myself because i'll forget right i'll, I'll for when i look at something two years later i don't remember all the details so i create a lot of self-documentation mm -hmm. so i use it for my own documentation it Got supports it. markdown which is kind of my preferred uh you know method uh and it's great for that it's really lightweight and um i don't have to worry about my data being somewhere other than on my network okay i i, I see where you're going i like that so can you take that and then it, it so aside from the local backup do you have like a on the uh on the cloud backup or is it something you could post to like a website or what do you do for that point yeah, so what I do is I just VPN into my network, right? And then I can, I hit it from my phone or I hit it from my laptop. Right, but do you ever do you ever publish this information or can you? Uh, you can share notebooks. I mean, that's a, that's a capability, um, you know, within 
uh, within Jupiter is you can you can share notebooks and um, I, I don't do that. I, I've just kind of like I said use it for a personal documentation system, but it certainly has that capability. Jupiter Hub is a networked version uh, version of Jupiter Notebooks, so it's designed for team use or distributed use. Okay, I like it. Thank you for sharing that. Great. Yeah, you bet. It's great, uh, great project for a spare pie. Yeah, so not too taxing on the pie. The pie is okay dealing with it and all that fun stuff. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's a it's a really lightweight interface. Um, now I uh, I connect an M2 drive to my pie, mm -hmm. and that's where my documents are stored. Right, or if you've got a, you know, if you've got a NAS or something, you could you can push them to that NAS. But uh, I certainly wouldn't want to keep your important documents on the on the SD card. But right. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it's you know it's snappy enough for me for sure. I don't do a lot of like computational stuff in it. I, I don't use it for that purpose uh -huh. you know for me i'm just using it i i use it for evernote you know it's it's like evernote on my network is probably the best way to think about it i i had no idea that you had such a cool setup for your uh for everything you do i i love that i we might have to talk more about this if i decide to refurb some of the ways i'm doing my notes i i have to say i do like the iphone notes uh in the ios and uh apple hegemony that i that i live in but uh i i do like that off-grid capability and and the markup capability is also really powerful so yeah that's that's sweet dude i appreciate that Thank yeah you. you bet all right so next is frank the youtube's frank how you doing man thanks for hanging out on a uh, jason ham radio 2.0 oh, yeah. live stream last uh last night i realized i uh, i closed my tab that had your favorite locomotive on it i wanted to pull it up because uh, it, it is that's a that's a butte man that's a butte the union pacific 844 that that that's the steam locomotive uh and uh howdy not much going on i'm actually putting a video out tuesday evening in the tuesday night playlist leading up to the ham radio clubhouse where they may or may not talk about ham radio this week uh, um i know uh i think tim's gonna have a video there too but i'll let him talk about that mine's just another uh poda activation that i did back in November, I think it was, uh, I went out to Armstrong Woods National For Redwood Preserve. Armstrong mm -hmm. Woods Redwood Preserve, right? I keep getting the name wrong on it. <laughs> um, and I did a quick activation there in the evening, and that's what's coming out this Tuesday. Uh, it'll be one of, I, we looks like about three or four videos to come out before Ham Radio Clubhouse. Uh, other than that, not much else going on. I have five or six other videos lined up for the next five or six Tuesdays after that. Excellent. Well, staying busy, man. And I appreciate you supporting all of us uh, in, in all the craziness we do. So uh, I, I will say this. I really yeah. wish, I know he's probably exhausted. I really wish Mike were in, at least in voice tonight because uh, I, I won't give it away, but something happened at the Go Kit Challenge today that, uh, involved him and uh i i have witnesses to this one i helped him with his id 50 because i was having the same issue with it and he's probably gonna drop a video on that uh well it's mike who knows if he will but he's doing he the will. id 50 series so uh expect something about the id 50 from him uh, regarding weather issues, and I will leave it at that. Oh, interesting. All right, well, there you go. Look forward to that. Uh, Mike Kate MRD, uh, which is Ham Radio Tube. Tube. <laughs> tube. So, yeah, there you go. Excellent. Very good. I like I like the spoilers, or not the spoiler, but the... Uh, the, the, the teasers. The teaser, yeah. <coughs> Tim, Gray Man Poda, how you doing, man? You're next. You there, bud? Are you on the mic? Oh, well, he didn't mute himself. So, so by the so. way, this F this FT eight CN app will just keep it'll just keep calling CQ for anybody that it hears. It just goes nuts. Like it's it's just it's 
it's constantly going after anything it can see Q. I haven't even looked at my contacts yet. Hold on, let me see if I... Does that tablet get hot? Oh my god, I have so many contacts! <laughs> it's, it's pretty insane on 5 watts, dude. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. We're we're making we're we're getting some action, dude. We're getting some action out there. No question. Gray man, are you there? All right, well, I just ping I, I pinged him, so we'll see okay. what happens. We'll, we'll come back to him. It's no problem. Uh Paul Ham Radio Pen uh, Paul, the Ham Radio Pen Pals. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. I um I I was wondering where Tim was too, because he usually mute, mutes himself when he uh goes off a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. Now everything's good here. Uh, we're just, you know, getting ready for some really hot weather. Central Florida Poto Group had their meet up today at uh, the same uh, wonderful park that we use for hamcation at Lake Louisa. Had a pretty good turnout for that. Um, but you know, the weather here is starting to get hot again, so uh, you know we have to be careful with the uh, heat and trying to keep sunscreen in stock. But you know, it's just life as it goes. Right, right on, man. Well, again, it was it was great to hang out with you. Are you thinking about getting up to Hamvention, or are you pretty much? I'm thinking about coming up to Huntsville if I can Ooh, if I can nice. fit it in. I have a uh, pretty busy summer traveling, and um, if I can get there, um, there's a flight out of here right into Huntsville, and Huntsville's only like 40 minutes in the like maybe 40 minutes in the air, so. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about getting up to Huntsville. Dayton, not so sure. But, okay. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. If we can uh, squeeze it in, we're going to do that. Excellent. And in Excellent. the meantime, the HRCCV group is very active. Tested a lot of people this past week. And uh, doing a lot of heroes from, from zeros. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been a lot of fun. And kicking around a lot of stuff and bringing new people in. Uh, Ed from Philly, I think, is going to be our, one of our newest VEs, and um, look forward to working with him. Um, and that's that's about it, bro. Right on. I appreciate that. All right. Thanks for hanging out. So Tim, Tim says he's out for tonight and just didn't disconnect. Oh, okay. No problem. All right. So Jason had to head out, unfortunately. But uh, Mark, Boondock Echo, how you doing, man? Hey, 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 I'm feeling better, Josh. Thanks for asking. Yeah, man. Um, Boondock Echo's just rocking. We finished our crowd supply, you know, I don't know, week two ago. We're still waiting on the money. Um, but the once that comes in, we've got some samples that will come our way. Once we confirm them, we'll send out the manufacturing order and get these things out into people's hands, which I know they're excited about, we're excited about. Um, so it's great. Oh, I've got good news. Uh, the okay. DigiRig okay. to K1 connector that, you know, uh, we found a source in China where we can buy those things for $2 a piece. And oh, wow. I know you're thinking, well, how much are we going to sell those to you to you guys for? And the answer is nothing. We're going to put one in everybody's case. Uh, it's going to be a freebie. So that'll be fun. We can decode some Morris at a basic level. I don't know if it's ready for prime time, but it's at least base level. We're playing around with Rattlegram. It looks like we'll be able to do all that kind of stuff, DTMF, and some digital modes. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's still there's still plenty of them for sale. So if you guys are interested, buy one. And um, we're already working on the hardware for number two. Right on. Very good. Well, uh, just in case anybody's curious, we will be doing a live stream where the whole crew from Boondock Echo, if they're available, is going to be on a live stream. We're going to talk about, you know, breaking it all down and having a little bit more fun with it as, uh, you know, a non-paid user uh, or, you know, a monthly service user. We'll go through the whole, you know, length of it and make sure we get all your questions answered. An incredibly valuable tool, and I, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us and making that available because I, I think it is something that that didn't exist should exist and you guys are doing it so thank you for that absolutely man and i don't hang out here because i'm trying to sell boondock echoes no i, I know you don't boondock. i know i know you're here dude i i, I love it so love thank it. you so yeah. much yeah yeah it's a, it's a cool group um so i'm glad you built this community of i would say 99 percent 
you know, wonderful human beings and one person that's feisty. So, you know, hey. Yeah, I, I have to say, I feel very much like Kevin Costner in Field of Dreams. Like, I built the thing. And even then, like, I didn't build it all by myself. I had a number of people who helped me. And the community's just grown up around it. And that's not because I made y'all come out here. And, and that's not because I'm out there all the time. It's it's literally through you all doing what you do and being active uh, on the Discord and all that. So just thank you, everybody. I, can't, I cannot say that enough. This is literally the spot where, where many people get their answers for ham radio that they can't get in any other ways. And that's just, in, it's so invaluable. It, it's amazing. So thank you. I appreciate you guys. Really do. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Paul Prepham. Paul is in the chat too. Are you there, bud? Or did I, did we miss that? Prep no, he's here. Oh, I'm here. Sorry. There you are, bud. How's it going? Sorry, I'm kind of a lurker as well. No, so I'm you're just good. sitting here you're listening. Yeah. I'm not even paying attention. He's like, oh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Um, I was listening to uh, to Digital Rancher, too, because I, I was filming him today. He was trying to make a satellite contact at the uh, at the Go Kit Challenge. So I was kind of behind you the whole time, Robert, filming you. So my video that I put out isn't going to be anything like like Frank's or uh, Jason's. It's just going to be a few little things. But the majority of that's probably going to be Robert trying to get that satellite contact. And he, he was hearing him, but the guy wasn't hearing him back. I was hoping he would get it because I don't get to see those very often. Um, it's fun. But yeah, I was going to, I was going to, I'll take a screenshot here. I'll post it in the, in the text group. It's funny tonight that you've got uh, the, uh, this, the CN app <laughs> and the true SDX. That was my go kit today. Was it? So, oh, excellent. yeah, so I bought that true SDX. What are they at? Like 110 bucks or something. Yeah. And I, and since I wasn't going to enter my Jeep in the mobile category, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to make one for fun. And I thought I'm going to see how can I make the smallest go kit? And I fit that a key, a six amp hour battery, an in fed antenna, the nano VNA, the cables, all in a nine by probably six canvas bag. So I'll copy and I'll paste that in the in the text what, group. But, what uh, were you using the key for? You had the QDX or you had the QMX? Uh, the the TRU the TRU SDX. Oh, the okay, the true SDX. Got it. This guy. True SDX. Yeah, the yeah, one yeah, you've got yeah. on got the it. screen right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not using that right now, but yes, yes. Copy, oh, okay. Copy. I thought you were. Yeah, I guess. No, the I'm on the QDX. On, the QDX is the one that I'm on oh, the okay. 80 and 20 Q, uh, QD 80 through 20 QDX. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I I just realized the screen's not even lit up. So that yeah, makes no, sense. it's it's just chilling. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I left a I left a live stream today. I just left it running on the group, and then I'm put I'm, I've got a, a a time lapse kind of everyone going back and forth, and then I'll add some more video and I'll put that up later this week. But then uh, Sunday nights when I usually do a live stream or a video upload, and it'll probably be free DV. I've been messing with that digital HF mode last couple of weeks, um, so hopefully I can get my buddy to to get on at the same time and and test that and see how it works um, for digital voice over HF when the conditions aren't so good. But that'll probably be set, uh, Sunday night. Right on. I'm literally replying to people on uh, on the stream right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, post, the, post the, the image for that. I, I want to bring it up here so we can take a look at it. Next is uh, yeah, Tim. Um, oh. uh yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to jump in there, Paul. I, I wish you would have uh, introduced yourself. I didn't. Um, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't connect the dots there. So my apologies. It would have been uh, would have been cool to chat a bit. Oh, oh. That's the uh, uh, Jeep I want to buy. Oh, oh, he just <laughs> Frank's on tank radios. Uh, on right now. Yeah, sorry, off. Robert. I uh, you were you were doing the satellite, um, and so I didn't want to bug you. But uh, yeah, I'm. So, I apologize. I didn't get around to meeting you. So. Maybe next time I get to actually meet you. Yeah, no worries. Next time for sure. Thanks. Uh, okay, there was a question in the chat. Josh, did you get your QMX? Not only do I have my QMX, I haven't built it yet. <laughs> so the answer to your question is yes. I, I it, It's one of those builds where I have to like, you can't do it in one hour. Believe me, I tried. I tried doing a QDX. I, I did get the QDX running. That was working successfully. But this is one of those radios that you want to work. And so doing it live is 
never really the way. So I, I will probably record it, record the build, and then edit it all up into a nice little short video, and then and then post it. Uh, the QMX though is is on my short list. I I I I'm. I'm a first gen QMX, which is always a little worrisome of the the QRP labs. They make great stuff. I'm not I'm not complaining, uh, but but they come out with a lot of firmware upgrades. So we're probably about that point where it's like calmed down enough that I could build it. And there's there's probably some errata that's been put into the uh, instruction manual for building that when I build it, it's going to be really solid. So it's it's probably going to happen in the next couple of months. So yeah, thanks for reminding me. But yeah, uh, I've got it. I've got it. Haven't built it yet, but we'll get there. You are the god of live builds. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to be necessarily, but at the same time, like soldering live and following instructions, and then trying to do the chat, and then running the whole live stream at one time. That is chaotic. I, I always sit down and think, oh, we're, I'm going to have a nice live stream where I just build a radio, but it's, it's never quiet or calm Something stops working. It, it's always chaos it's always complete chaos sounds um, like you need a co-host to uh, uh, read the I, questions to you yeah i mean frank you know i if i could be uh, so lucky as to have a frank i i do just need I, to bribe I, the kid with Yu-Gi-Oh cards to run the chat for you that yeah, my done. it would be more like Wild Kingdom, except to be Marlin saying, no. "Yeah, what was it, Jim? Jim, Josh is going in now with the IC regulator." So, uh, odd, odd point there. Somebody mentioned Yu-Gi-Oh. My oldest son is is into Yu-Gi-Oh. My youngest son is into Pokemon. I played Magic as a kid. I still have a bunch of Magic cards, and I gotta say, like, I actually played Yu-Gi-Oh too, like a decade a decade ago. Um, I had a killer Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Absolutely killer. And Yu-Gi-Oh! now is almost like impenetrable in difference of what it used to be. It's crazy. You can't even step into Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but Pokemon? Pokemon cards are really fun. That's a fun game. No, close the door. Close the door. Close the door now. I'm almost done. Close the door. Bring the so, cards. So yeah. while you're yelling, Josh, I just yeah. DM'd you something, by the way, but that may open up a whole nother can of worms. Yeah, I, I haven't got to my DMs yet. They're still waiting in the message so, input. But um, close the door. No, 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 so, no, no. Don't bring in the Pokemon cards. No. So while you're... He literally got his top well, of Pokemon. Do it. No! Do it! No! Okay. Let's let me, see him. Let me see. This is my son. Okay. okay. So Here, here's how he holds his cards. This is the most chaotic thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's <laughs> completely crazy. Edison, no, this is not. A, no, 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 no. We're not doing that right now. Well, at least they all. I'm look trying like to comments, finish. I'm so trying to wrap really up. Worth much. Okay, well, I've showed your cards. Go inside. Go inside. No, go inside. Go over here. Go in, over here. You got to go inside. He probably we, knows where every one of them is. My his mom gave him a big plastic bin, and he just dumped everything in there. And I'm like, son, this is not the way to do this. No, it's not. We got to get you a better organizer. No. It, so, Josh, I'll make this easy since you said you're behind on messages. We lost Tim, but we gained – we lost the other Tim, but we gained a Frank, and I forgot one thing that I wanted to mention as well. Uh, okay, so, yes. Let's uh, – well, let's take the thing you wanted to mention, and we'll go to Frank, the, t the tank radio. So, go yes. ahead. Yes. Uh, so, real quick, Thursday nights at – about 8 p.m. Pacific time, so convert that to your time zone wherever you're at. Uh, I go live with the Northern California ham swap from the N6 ICW repeater system on my YouTube. And I've nice. dropped my link already, but I'll drop it again if you want. And uh, that's going to be a weekly thing every Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific. Nice. Very good. Well, yeah, go check him out. Oh, well, drop the link so people can know because otherwise, okay, guys. Doing that now. Yeah, thing to remember is nobody really like will remember a week from now, or whatever. Like when we're live, the best way if you're a YouTuber, drop your link in the chat, and then everybody watching, please subscribe to them. These are good people, so subscribe to them, and then you get notified. Especially if you hit that bell when they go live or they post a video, right? That's going to be the most important thing. And so there you go. That's a good QDX. That is a that is a proper true SDX setup, not QDX. True SDX setup. And then I I have to acknowledge the cat cup. We we love seeing a cat cup. 
Uh, I will say, um, I am absolutely in. I hate, I hate, hate the size of the knob uh, on the QDX. I downloaded a a one millimeter three D print, and that's what's on there right now. And oh man, is it so much better than that stock one? The stock one is just. Way I was wondering too big. how you had green. I was a little it's jealous. Too big. I, yeah, I printed it. You can you can go download the three D print right now. It took twenty minutes to print it. Easy. I, I printed it before we went live, and then literally took my little cutoff wheel, cut off the the uh, that is a rotary encoder. Yeah, just cut that thing off. Drop the new one on there. I had to I had to chamfer the edges a little bit, but once I did that, it was good. All right, now it is time for Dick Radio. How's it going, man? Dude, man, I love that. I need that intro in my videos from now on. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I'm doing great. I think it's been uh, said a lot, but I just got back. Well, technically, technically, I just got back from the cigar bar where I finished my uh, video for the Go Kit Challenge. I'm going to be releasing that Monday, and um, it... It was fun. It was a fun event. I love seeing everyone's kids out there. It's mostly, and I agree with uh, Scott and Craig when they came on my live stream, talked about the Go Kit Challenge. This was put together on um, the ideas where we can come together and get ideas for our own Go Kits and also show off um, what cool things that we've done individually with our kits. And I absolutely love it. I loved everything. Uh, all the guys out there, we had a blast. Um, and it, it was, I can't say much more on it, man. It was a great event. And, um, if you're interested, you are more than welcome to take the go kit challenge and, um, bring it to your area because they, they're, they're not trying to hold it just in Texas. They're not trying to hold the name. Um, just, just grab the, the roll, sweep them to whatever you want and just, have at it. It's a great group of guys, and we, we had a blast out there. Plus, um, well, it did rain. It did rain. Um, I didn't set up my whole my whole poto kit, but it, I had a fun time out there. I, I said that on J Jason's stream that, I mean, isn't the, the part of having a go kit and all that stuff is that you're slightly resistant to rain? Like, isn't that kind of how they you built were, it? Like, There are some... Yes, yes. A lot of them had um, very well rain-resistant go boxes and things, but once you open them up, you know, you're exposing that to the world and the weather, you know, you, the, the whole box itself, and, you know, you got the Pelican cases, and then you got the um, traveling um, audio boxes. Um, when they're all closed, they're, you know, nice and water-resistant, and you, you, you're not going to have um, that much of a rain issue, but, you know, uh, once you open it up, it's kind of just exposed to the world. So, yeah, I, I do see where you're, you're going with that. However, what can you do to waterproof it? I, I, I'm going to ask you that. Umbrellas. Well, I mean, um, it, 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 so it, it depends uh, yeah, on how you build it. it. It depends on how you build it. So if you have like a gator case that's like flipped over and the rain just hitting you from the top, well, I mean, the rain can go nuts. Most mobile radios, even HF radios, can take a little bit of water on the screen and whatnot. It won't hurt it. So I guess it depends on how the intensity of the rain is. But mm -hmm. like if you've got the back sealed, the back has an O-ring. And if you just have an umbrella, I guess, for yourself, then you're also protecting the front of the radio. So it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. If you've got one of those cases it's like in a Pelican where you flip the lid open and the lid's exposed on the top, like open air, then yeah, that could mm -hmm. be a problem. Um, mm -hmm. but I mean, a lot of the times I, I would expect that if, if you have a go box, there's a bit of like preparedness in, in your mind when you're, you know, thinking about all this stuff. So you might have like a tarp or an emergency blanket or something like that. And you could easily put that over your head and get shielded from the rain and all that stuff if you're doing it that way. And there's no mm -hmm. reason not to do that. Right. From my point of view. My my kit is not water resistant. Um, it is all in a backpack that probably will get soggy if you throw water in it. And it's it's a sunny day, overcast day pack for you know going out and uh, activating parks. So that's why I didn't set it all up. 
um, outside. Um, I, if you haven't talked to him already, Frank um, set up this delta wedge with his tarp that he had everything underneath it and uh, pointed into the rain. So the rain was not bothering him. His antenna was outside, but he was sitting in a, in a nice dry, well, yeah. relatively dry, the ground's soaking wet environment there. Oh, man. And Go ahead, comment. Yeah, I don't know if you saw a couple of weeks ago that the, the Australian uh, guy, uh, Ham Jazz, um, mm. he had this little tiny tent that you put on the like picnic table, and he had a 7300 wedged in this thing, and a couple of other things, just had the microphones and stood there in a blazing rainstorm doing a live stream. It was hilarious. <laughs> I but love the radio it. Radio yeah. never got wet once. It was great. It's like it's an it's umbrella a, tent. It's a little doggy tent. Is and, uh, it was amazing. So I don't know if anybody wants to. You know, I don't know what I had, but yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. It, it was a little doggy tent. Well, if you guys want to laugh, at somebody doing that in the rain. I think the first live stream I ever scheduled um, to do a satellite pass. Uh, via live stream uh, I, I scheduled it you know thought I was doing great from a planning perspective had it all ready to roll and of course a rainstorm rolls in and it's like well geez what do I do now I guess I do the pass so uh, if you guys want to see me get soaked doing a pass it's the first live stream I've ever done with a satellite pass I've made a QSO with Simon in every one of his rainstorms with his experimental antennas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's even got one made out of a tarp, and it's hard to get rained on under a tarp. Simon's a blast. Uh, funnest guy I've ever seen on YouTube. Hey, Josh. Uh, yep. The other Tim is back in the chat, but he's muted. Tim, are well, you available? Can you hear us, Tim? Well, that that was it for me, man. I had a blast, and I rounded out the day at the cigar bar. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, I will say that uh, that mm -hmm. Tank has a like insane uh, process. Like he he will he will edit wherever he can edit. I've seen this guy edit. Any like literally anywhere, wherever he's sitting, he sits down, he pulls the laptop out, he starts editing. That is a level that reminds me of when I was vlogging, because mm -hmm. that's what I used to do. I would just I would camp out anywhere and just start editing. It didn't matter, and that I just I love that intensity. I love that that hustle. If you well, will, thank that, you, man. Great job, man. It, like comment, comment. Go ahead, comment. My favorite place that I've ever seen Frank edit was literally five minutes after he landed after skydiving. Really? Immediately? He wow. Couch, he immediately went back to the couch, got downloaded the video, and he was starting to edit it right away. Mm. Fresh in your mind, man. You had the shots in your head, and you, you, if you go back hours or a day later, you, you forget about that. Just bam, let's do it now. Yeah, well, I mean, that's actual. That's actually like a a really a poignant part in that. Like, if you if you remember what you were doing, then editing it immediately is always really good because it's like it's fresh in mind. You can get started with it immediately, which yeah, it's totally true. Hey Frank, I suspect it's side boom under a different name tonight. He says, "Edit while in the air next time." <laughs> live edit I'll, I'll give it a shot no live live jumping out of the plane pulling out the laptop and that's right doing on the way mm -hmm. down <laughs> i love it well thanks you josh man uh give me a spot here i go ahead and give it back to you um yeah no i think we went through all the youtubers so uh we're gonna take a couple more questions and i gotta wrap up here because i think uh Leia bought a Mahjong kit, and she wants everybody to learn Mahjong. So we're going to have to wrap up here so I can go play some Mahjong in school. Oh, that sounds here. so much fun. I always wanted to learn Mahjong. So, so, Ma so by the way, everybody who, who has played, like, as, you know, as I did on PCs, you played Taipei, which is where you match the Mahjong tiles, and they, mm -hmm. they fly off the screen. That's not actually playing Mahjong. Right. Mahjong is almost like building hands or hands and, like, 
it depends if you play Japanese versus like Chinese style. There's there's different variances to it. It's obviously a Chinese game. There's uh there's wins that get involved with it. They're like it's actually a very deep game. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to 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 break the seal on this one because this is a game that I haven't actually played before in the sense of like knowing what I'm doing. So this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna. I'm it's gonna like fit. more intense version of chess. Uh no no chess is chess is the most in, intense version of of chess. Chess is okay. crazy. Chess, chess is a proper hard game, but mahjong is. It's 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 not that. It's is its own thing. Too- is she going to teach you the gambling side of it? She doesn't know how to play either. Everybody's going into this wrong. Oh, okay. We're all we're all going to learn to play, and I'm uh, I'm I'm going to figure out all the angles and and start. Yeah, but are, but are you going to bet with real money? Leia and I probably will. We'll bet the kids with chores <laughs> and whatnot. Uh, I think I've effect- effectively have broken my uh, my tablet here. It keeps wanting to do DX. It's really focused on getting that DX, but there you go. All right. Um, anything else that we need to hit? I think we hit everything. Unless you want to hear about my day today. Yes. Sli- sli- sliding off into the mud, trying to go see a house, and ending up in a ditch and having to get towed out. Oh, and no. And that's how the day started. <laughs> and yesterday... Um, my, we were looking at a house, and my uh, brother-in-law and sister, and the real estate agent apparently opened a closet and found some of those questionable toys laid out in in the closet. Oh no! And, yeah, and then see uh, me and um, the the real estate lady's husband anyway uh, we're, we're all kind of friends but anyway uh we hadn't even seen it and i was outside looking around and they had all these you know four wheelers and motorcycles and all that and i said wow they have a lot of toys and then everybody in the background starts breaking out laughing and can't stop and we're looking at each other going what 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 did we say but anyway uh. I, I found i found one good property today that was just too out of my price range and then i'm still leaning on the first one that i that i originally saw and uh so and then trying to figure out the money side of it's just a pain in the ass but the i've today at least i took the radio out and i was able to sit and listen and make sure that you know that i'm not hearing anything um uh, and I, I mean, the the couple of uh, places that I tested against, even though there was neighbors fairly close, I mean, you know, within uh, maybe a, you know, five, six, eight hundred feet or something like that. Uh, even with that, uh, I was getting about an S two, S one to S two noise floor on forty, uh, which is what I'm shooting for. So I, you know. I think I'm heading in the right direction, getting out of this uh, uh, urban environment or suburban environment. There you go. Yeah, you're you're probably right. Uh, the more off grid or the more outside the suburbs you get, you're also free from HOAs and all that other chaos. So mm-hmm. I think I agree with you there. All right, guys, everybody on the Discord, thank you so much for hanging out. We'll be back to our normal discussioning ways uh next week and i uh, really appreciate you all right take it easy it was great having jason yeah, having take care josh 73 73 right. 73 yeah so that that'll about do it i'm gonna charge up my by the way android tablet uh i i do have a new android device coming to me right now to capitalize on this i want the most battery life possible on an android device and i'm told that this one should give me about a week on a charge. And that's what we're aiming for. So ultra portable ham radio setup for doing digital modes like FT8. We're going to do other stuff too, but that's what we're going to be talking about in a future video. I don't have it yet, obviously. I don't even know when it's going to come to me. It's probably on the long boat from China. At least we're on the outside of the Chinese New Year. So a gong hei fa choi to you. And I will talk to you later, all right? 73. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.
Take it easy, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Get ham radioactive until I touch you again. 73!